podcast go straight to hell yeah speaking of hell check out east coast bohane podcast <laughs> first of all i'm addicted to the show i like that that's cool okay whole whole hunt you live it you breathe it this east coast has a little bit more of an edge and a grind This is the East Coast Bowhunting Podcast, Illin, Chillin' and Killin'. We are back with a very special episode, number 19. Our boy, my brother, Kurt Geyer, joins us and enlightens the show by dropping not just big bucks, but priceless knowledge. We are shooting into Slave Studio in Coventry, Connecticut, hiding in the mountains of God's heaven. I'm your boy, D-Rock, here with... Trev. Ryan. And today's episode is brought to you by Shabim Brewing, the Hunter's Beer. 100 Demons, East Coast hardcore music known worldwide. Shopping. Check out their merch at www.shopshogun.com. Trev's Euros for all your Euro mount needs. CT Bow Hunting, CT's number one source for bow hunting. Nor'easter Game Calls, get them in close for all your game call needs at www.nor'eastergamecalls.com. And now we are presented by Working Class Bow Hunter, a hunting That's podcast. Right. A hunting podcast for the working class. So to speak, working class for your ass. <laughs> <laughs> we are here as always for new and old hunters by sharing our experiences in the woods through playing and slaying. What's up? What's up, D-Rock? What's up, fellas? <laughs> What's going on, man? I'm fucking pumped for this Me episode. too. Big Been episode. pumped all day. Oh, man. And you know what? After a long work week, this is exactly what I need to unwind with some of our boys from out west talking to kurt geyer i mean we've been looking forward to this shit since we started podcasting on some real yeah you know what i mean exactly i mean we, we're busy every day busting our asses doing our day-to-day trying to squeeze in hunting and then now more than ever trying to do the whole christmas thing you know you got family visiting left and right you gotta you know squeeze in time for that to keep everyone happy dude it's been a heck of a shopping stressful Hell yeah, the long ass lines, the stupid dumb traffic. It's like, yeah. wow. Not into it. But I'm into the podcast. Yeah, that's right. Hell yeah. Give give our friends something to listen to when they're out doing that there you bullshit. Go. <laughs> Ease up the stress a little bit. Yeah, you know? Exactly. Let's get the feel good. Start laughing randomly and people looking at you like uh, you're talking to yourself and shit. Yeah. You know, like, what the fuck is that, dude? <laughs> they're like laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, so East meets West, man. That's I'm crazy. I'm pumped. I can't wait to get Kurt on the phone. Hell yeah. Yo, uh, Trev, actually, what'd you get into this past week? Um, This past week, um, I, th- I hunted today. Yeah? I you did. see anything or what? Uh, No, man. The wind it got crazy, man. A couple, like, like half hour before sunset, it uh, the wind picked up, and I was just blowing real hard, this, that, and the other thing, and... Uh, it sucked. Yeah. It was got cold, cold front and stuff like that. I mean, it was Ryan, nice as fuck out though. It was. It was nice. really nice. Oh, it was, it was nice. beautiful at first, yeah. and then the wind started to pick up, and I'm like, "What the hell, man?" The it leaves sucked. are nice and quiet too. Oh yeah, yeah. everything because was it wet. rained like crazy yesterday. Well, yeah, Trev sitting in a pine tree, and that don't help much. When no, the wind thing's oh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was in a pine. <laughs> Getting I, sat, tree sat yeah. in your eyes and shit like yeah. uh. Yo, that. That tree was moving like five feet one way. Oh, dude, it was crazy. It was uh, out of control. Man. Ryan called me and was like, hey, dude, you know, I just talked to a landowner and there's some buck activity over here. They saw some rubs and whatnot. And there was like fresh that chocolate green. buck, right? Oh, the chocolate. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, I like th- me some chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, so we went in there and... Hunted it out, and nothing really was moving. A lot of fresh sign, though. I mean, yeah, I couldn't lot. believe it, you know, and he was saying that he's seeing bucks at noontime. Second, oh. a- second so, so is something, on. Something's moving. No kidding. Heavy, so. Awesome. It was cool. It was good to get in there. Hell yeah. And it was good to hunt. I hunted the other day, too. 
Uh, actually, I hunted it three or four days throughout the week. Uh, I had a nice eight pointer on camera, um, and just couldn't seal the deal with them. I haven't seen them, so. But it's all right. It was though. just tough to know where they're at. That's that's it. You know, I mean, they're around, so it's definitely a com- yeah, and seeing them and stuff like that. So that's cool, you know, especially on camera. Yeah, any day you I just was- got to be there at the right time, doing the right thing. And the weather's kind yeah. of been off, and it has been all over the place too. Yes. I mean, it's... They're it's, probably confused as well. They start fucking the weather. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Not yet. Wait, not yet. Not yet. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move. Okay, okay. No, yeah. oh, go, go, go. Yeah, Poor like, guys are getting blue balls out yeah. there. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like 18 it's one night, 45 the next. Like, yeah. dude, what is going on, man? This start, is just... You ever have to turn on the air conditioner? You know, when you, you know, <laughs> damn romantic with your old lady and you have to turn on the AC because it's just too much heat. I, yeah. I, I, could, I could picture them the same way with the weather in Connecticut. Exactly. You know? <laughs> They're all over the place. They're out there making babies and shit. That's and it. Just have to start sweated out, I guess. That's it. <laughs> What'd you get into, D Rock? Actually, uh, just it was mainly a lot of work, to be very honest. But I got in at night. I would do a lot of scouting to try to set up for uh, morning hunts. And I love doing that because don't be afraid to do that. Because in Connecticut especially, or even most of New England, there's a heavy population of people and deer. So just, if you're trying to get on that mature buck, then obviously you got to do your digging and and you'd be surprised around this area you're actually they're actually hiding like behind the local mcdonald's you know what i mean because it's it's so mountainous here that they have little pits like the whole valley i live in the valley you know what i mean it's called the valley yeah (laughs) so i mean it's a whole strip of mountain ridge and 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 different mountain sets and the river so i mean once you get into nogtuck you get the mutant deers but you know yeah, what I mean? Off that yeah, water yeah. in the, yeah. the river. You got a hoozy. Yeah, you don't want to go that that south. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just a lot of scouting work and and it was really cool. Actually, at the end of the week, I actually started uh, doing a lot of scoring, and I'm trying to catch up because it, it's on high demand right now, so it gets a little hectic. I mean, think about it. People have to wait 60 days to get their their antlers scored, and, and no bears yet. I was hoping to get a bear, but no bears yet. I got plenty for you to measure around here. No, no, yeah. no. I mean, people mm-hmm. don't want to submit. I'm going to... Oh, shit. Oh, well. it's, bad enough are... it's, it's bad enough it's volunteer service. You know what I mean? Well, one of our landowners, he's got a big one he wants scored, doesn't he, Jeff? Yeah. That's a big boy. Yeah. Ryan, the porn star, knows about scoring big ones. <laughs> you know what I mean? Score as Especially many as booners. But, yeah, booners. <laughs> <laughs> booners or... Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. We won't go there. Yeah. <laughs> What'd but, you get into, Rye? Wait, 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 wait. Whoa, 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 I wanted whoa, to whoa, finish whoa. what I was doing, scoring the elk, though. I had oh, the pleasure of doing that. Right. Uh, that's what I was leading to, the transition from, yeah, from getting, getting in there scouting. I was just getting ahead of you. Getting in there scouting and doing my homework so this way sets up the late season hunt. And I headed out all, all the way out to Falls Village and hooked up with a couple good old boys. Uh, what is it? Shout out to Bill Clark and Greg Young. They were really cool people, made it really comfortable to sc- uh, score their elk in front of them at their spot and the main reason i wanted to go is not just to meet up because i met bill earlier he's actually really down there a cool dude and the fact that he hustled out in colorado they playing for 10 days he shot that bull and uh in three wow so <laughs> and they crazy they were looking forward to chilling in colorado like you know what i mean they were all set up for that and uh just something about it well there's lots of other things you can do in colorado too uh yeah yeah in Connecticut too. Yeah. I mean Massachusetts it's more legal, but yeah. Yeah, that too. That too. <laughs> but anyways, uh they were really humble people too and, and they shared they shared information on spots where you can get on good deer and that and it's here in the state, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Here I'm not gonna say where, but here out there past the tree and over the rock, yo. It's on. Sweet spot. That's sweet. Sweet spot. So that intel in itself is worth going what, to measure. What uh what did his antlers uh measure out at? Uh, if my memory serves me correct, I think it was uh, 351 and 5 eighths. Nice. Nice. Great bull. Yeah. Great bull. That's a big bull. Six by six, yeah. Beautiful. <sighs> that It was om- almost symmetrical. The I think the point deductions was only like 10 and 7 eighths. Wow. Total. Wow. Total So deductions. it was crazy symmetrical. Yeah. yeah. It was that's, pretty crazy. Wow. Considering at a 350, that's, that's nothing. And for you newbies out there, it's... Uh, what we're talking about right now is certain parts of the, the antler. Um, the whole score is the measurement. We'll get into another episode in more detail, but it's just basically the score of the antlers for the new guys out there uh, just tuning in. Yeah, but, how many uh, inches? 
We'll get into that. Yeah. But <laughs> that can get another crazy. Time. Yeah, yeah, it's too much. It's, yeah. That's a fucking rabbit hole. Yeah. That's like our trade, for sure. <laughs> we'll be here all night. I'm surprised you didn't Waiting to get our guest on, talking yeah. about <laughs> measuring. Oh, yeah. You don't get us inches. going, yo. Yeah. Don't get us going. If, no. I'm telling you. Talking you bring that inches. up, you guys are going to be like, it's going to be me and Kurt talking. Yeah. Watch. <laughs> but there are a lot of questions. Another episode. But yeah, it was really cool to get out there, get some new land. Um, mingle with the people from the east, and and that's what it's about on the measuring field. Is you get to meet so many people. That's awesome. Ryan. What'd you do this past week? Thanks, uh, man. Oh man, similar to D Rock, I had a lot of work going on. Um, I was on call this week, and out of the few years I've been at my job, first that I've ever been called in. I got called in three, four times. So my mornings were booked up. Put a lot of overtime in work. Finally got out today, and uh, like Trev said, we weren't able to seal the deal. But a lot of fresh signs. So there's still hope out there. Only a couple weeks left, but there's a lot of hope. Um, that second estrus is really kicking in, so get out there and keep chasing them. Yeah. It's funny, you know, you're a hunter if you say the second estrus. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? most yeah. people are saying second. They're rut. saying what? Second rut. Yeah, but you yeah. know that no. level of intelligence of that hunter when it's stop. Yeah. It's funny. It's right. funny. Is right. is for him for for this going on? So we had on uh, two days ago on one of the cell cams, we had gotten a picture of a doe with her tail up, waving it side by side, and it was like twelve thirty in the afternoon. And uh, it was a younger doe, and she was obviously, you know, doing, you know, estrus things walking through the field. Whether or not she was or she shaking wasn't, I don't booty. know, but I wasn't there. She was shaking her booty. She, was, she had that tail up, doing Twer- her thing. Twerking a bringing little. Them, bringing, <laughs> she was twerking. Them, bringing the boys to the yard. Yeah. <laughs> milkshake, milkshake. It's <laughs> It acts as a it's fan. Up. It acts as a fan to waft that scent. Yeah. Oh, that's a, yeah. that's oh please! See, you know when you walk he in brought the, it there. Yeah, he brought it there. You walk course. into the strip club and the girls are just wafting it <laughs> side wafting. by side. Trev, what do you know about what do you know about strip clubs? It's Trev? None of your business. <laughs> Going go to strip joint and wafting. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, you guys are crazy, man. But that's what it is. The second estrus. You know what I mean? Uh, it gets crazy for sure. That's what you're hearing in the club? That's what you're hearing in the club? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wafting and bleating. Wafting and, and bleating. bleating. That's funny. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Is that time? It is that time. Here we are again with uh, Ryan the Porn Star's weekly whitetail forecast. Um, so it's really coming down to crunch time here for us in Connecticut and um, majority of the country is actually done with their deer seasons. I know our boys up in Maine are all jealous and we're sending them pictures from being in the stand. Um, so for those of us that are fortunate to still have a couple weeks left of the season, here's your forecast for the upcoming week here. Um, here in Connecticut, we're dry and we're mild during the daytime with 40, 40 degree temps in the day. So um, it is dipping down into the 20s and so during the nighttime, but 40 middays. Um, we're looking at some rain possible from Thursday to Saturday, and we're looking at strong breeze and winds all week long. Um, for those of you guys out there that do hunt the moon phases, we're looking at a waxing gibbous moon um, up until Saturday the 22nd. So this coming Saturday, we do have a full moon coming for those of you that do hunt the moon phases. Um, and those of you that do hunt the moon positions, talking about that peak game activity, we're looking at the underfoot moon going to be um, you know, the moon position for primetime deer movement this week. Um, we're looking at that being in the morning time. Cool. That's look good at, info. Absolutely. Um, and then, you know, we're going to be looking at Friday. It's going to be switching to the overhead moon. Um, position is going to be about 5.45 a.m. to Sunday. Um, going to be about 8 a.m. So stay in that stay in that stand. Um, get in there nice and early and stay in there until 10, 10 11 o'clock. Um, even with that second extra coming, those, those bucks are going to be moving throughout the day. Uh, so that's and they're just, gonna slip up too. Absolutely. They definitely are. They're don't, searching, don't catch them slipping. Yeah. Right, they're searching for whatever is left over. You know, all the, all the leftovers is what they're getting out here. So um, the sloppy seconds, the sloppy <laughs> no, the sloppy first, the sloppy, <laughs> the sloppy first. <laughs> yeah, the sloppy seconds. Uh, so that's that's your quick weekly. As long as there's no CWD, it's fine. Right. <laughs> that's <laughs> better than that. <laughs> For your protection. Uh, that's your, that's your quick weekly whitetail forecast brought to you by Ryan the Porn Star here at uh, East Coast Bow Hunting Podcast. Hell yeah. Good job, yo. That that sounded really good actually. So that that's what it is. I don't know about you guys. He did really, really well. Um I'm excited to get Kurt here, but before we get Kurt on the phone, let's do our giveaway. Ryan, what do you what do you got over there by your side? So what are we're we doing we got the our giveaway. Where, where to hunt giveaway. This is the from, where from last episode. The where to hunt app giveaway um that we announced last episode. 
We have a real nice Elk Ridge knife here, fixed blade knife uh, with the leather sheath going on in it. It's beautiful little field dressing knife, skin and knife. We also have a clamp light that clamps to the, the brim of your hat. Um, you can clamp it to your bow, you can clamp it to wherever you want. It's foldable, it's got the adjustable lights on it. We're also looking at a folding map compass to keep you in the right direction while you're in the woods. Um, and then if you happen to need it along the way, we got a fire starter here as well that you can spark a fire um, when you're out there if you happen to need some warmth. That's really cool. And just to recap for the people that were in there um, last week is we we uh, had our boy on, on the podcast, Where to Hunt, and we did the Where to Hunt giveaway. So we asked people, the listeners, to DM us a snapshot of them using the Where to Hunt app. Word, Trev? Yeah. So that was pretty cool giveaway because we had a lot of people hitting us with DMs, showing us where they're at, shouting out. And they, they always said they were at work. Whether I know this to be true or not, we don't know. But they all said they were at work, and the winner is, we have, what's his name here? Straight out of Indianapolis. Oh, oh. Uh-oh. Technical difficulty. <laughs> yeah. Indianapolis was was the uh, the winner, and I sound like a dumbass right now because I'm trying to look for it. <laughs> But uh, come on, D Rock, pressure's on. Dallas underscore Isbell, out of Indianapolis. Dallas underscore Isbell, you won the Where to Hunt app. It was really cool to see a shout out from Indianapolis. Finally, we had more out west, Midwest listeners tuning in, and they shouted us out. It was pretty cool, pretty badass. So, because we had what Connecticut winner, then a Massachusetts winner, and now Indianapolis. That's what's up. It's good, Trev. Spreading it around, man. <laughs> so I know about you. It. Yeah, so we'll we'll send you a shout out to you know on the social media to let you know you won. And I'm 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 sorry. Let's get to Kurt. Let's do it. Let's, let's do call it. him up. Call him. Yeah. All right. Let's call him. Hit him up. All right, we got Kurt Geyer on the phone. Oh, man, what's going on, Kurt? What's good? What's going on, guys? Thanks for having me. Hell yeah, the champ is here. Where, Trev? Yeah. Uh, the-, <laughs> the champ. <laughs> uh, it's been a long time coming, definitely, man. You, yeah, you helped, man. You helped us out here and there, and then one, one time it was like a... I, I know we got annoying as fuck at one point when we asked you something. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, you guys are all good. You guys are all good. I like helping good people out, man. You guys are our people, and uh, I can tell you guys are genuine, you know, of course. So I don't mind helping people like that. If we feel like people aren't in it for keeps, then I, I just kind of blow them off in a very nice way. <laughs> we appreciate <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Dude. I appreciate well, you can that, tell man. when people are about it. If they're not about it, you're just kind of like, yeah, man, this is what you do, and <laughs> You know, figure it out. You know? <laughs> I always, when I, my word is uh, just Google it. <laughs> just And you well, can say it nice, too. You could be like, just Google it. You know, like raise an octave. You know what I mean? But what you really want to say is. <laughs> All right, how to Google. Send them the link. <laughs> right, right. Oh, yeah. Man. Well, there's like a certain thing, you know, if someone's like done the research, which you guys have to like to try and learn. And there's people that ask questions that like, you can tell they haven't even like done research on their own yet at all. So it, it's just a, you get a different answer and a different, like, uh, tutorial that way. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I definitely understand. We we really appreciate uh, what what you've done in the past and and to, to the present. I mean, shit, seconds ago, word. Yeah. Word, <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, man. It's all good, dude. No, you guys, you guys are my boys. And what you guys have been doing with this podcast in such a short amount of time is incredible. And then it's just kind of a... Uh, it's crazy that I'm now being interviewed on a podcast that you have, D-Rock, because you were a listener of Working Class for a while, and I don't know, it's just, it's just kind of crazy how things turn out. Hell yeah. Everything's meant for a reason, my brother. Everything's yeah, meant for a true. reason. I, yep, I for sure. I no clue whatsoever that, that we would be here right now. And you know what? It's What better way to stay connected? I mean, shit, I text you. I call you on the phone sometimes. Fucking fuck it. Let's just connect podcast level and ride yeah, the dude. wavelength <laughs> yeah, it's it's so funny for sure, for sure. your family man you fit right in and if you say these guys with you on the east coast 
East Coast Bow Hunting Podcasts are cooler than they got to be cool because I got your word on it. So that's uh, as you always say, I got the wall built up. So I'll, I'll let these boys through. Yeah, <laughs> hey, man, that, don't don't sleep on the wall because I'm Mexican. I'll just dig a tunnel under it. <laughs> I like your note. So they sent me for this podcast. You guys sent me a bunch bunch of beer, which is uh, really good beer. But in, you wrote me a note said, "Hey, let, thanks for letting my Mexican ass through your wall." <laughs> <laughs> you like that? <laughs> yeah, I thought that was awesome. <laughs> oh man, I really miss you guys, man. Watch, Trev and Ryan are gonna find out the real deal. Uh, come, come, Iowa Classic. That's gonna be a lot of fun, man. Yeah, they'll wake up. Yeah. They'll wake up. <laughs> the young bucks, we're going big. Huh? Well, <laughs> we're, we're, bring, we're bringing the East Coast to the Midwest, so <laughs> yeah. that's right. Yeah. I do gotta say, this beer you guys sent me—I drink a lot of craft beer. It's tasty, but it's got me sipping water so I can talk on the podcast. Like, <laughs> mouth in this unit, man. <laughs> well, you're not talking about Bush Light, right? <laughs> uh, that's Mother's Milk, man. Yeah. Uh, this is like a protein shake. This other stuff. <laughs> we call that our water. Bush light, but her water. <laughs> it, it is like water, man. It's, it's what it's, we fuel on. It keeps us hydrated. Hell That's yeah. right. It's hell like yeah. having sex in a canoe. They're both pretty close to fucking water. <laughs> <laughs> and we drank 19, I, we averaged like 19.6 bush lights per hour podcast right. on uh, the show for a while. So, uh,. <laughs> we're, uh, we're we're familiar. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That is awesome. That's like that's like that's like our that's like having like t- three shabines. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really is. That is true, and it's not awesome. By the way, it's, it's really not cool. <laughs> we, we need to get our shit under wraps. <laughs> Speaking shabine, shabine. Ah. What do we got here, Dira? These ah. are new. These are new beers we got here. Yeah, we got, uh, these are a few of my favorite things. That's the name of the beer. <laughs> yep, that's the name of the beer. New England Indian Pale Ale. That shit is banging. Very Kurt. tasty. I'm yeah. going to have to send some of that out, too. Oh, I'll take it, man. Which, which one Which one you sipping on, by the way? I got the uh, Bullet Takes Flight. <laughs> oh. Ooh, the, the little weed, weed nugget. nugget. <laughs> <laughs> really good. The John Beer, though, is my favorite so far. Oh yep. yeah, that oh, is banging. That, that is a good one. That's the best one, my my opinion. Yeah, that's a good beer. I I thought it was gonna be like super generic at first. <laughs> I don't know why. And I, drank, <laughs> I was like, oh, there it is. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's good stuff. It's definitely good American beer. Great flavor. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely my favorite. It's funny, yo. The story behind that, Kurt. I actually wanted to do that for you, but me being being a dumbass, I actually sent out uh, one of the last four packs of the brewery because it's a seasonal beer. And oh yeah, yes. Yeah, I actually went to the back where I'm not supposed to be, <laughs> just like a typical typical Mexican, and grabbed the last four pack. Right, come to find out, and I sent that to to who did I send that to? Garrett. 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 Was it Garrett? Garrett yep. Yeah. Uh, I sent it to Garrett, and and I was thinking I needed in my head. I'm like I need to get the last John Bear. Come to find out, I was thinking for for you and him, and I was supposed to split the four pack and send you variety. My dumbass sent a four pack to him, so I was like buckling under the pressure. And then I found out that the owner of the brewery, I'm probably gonna get in trouble now. <laughs> yeah. Now you're <laughs> smelling it. Was. Yeah. yeah, no, I I snuck into his, his personal last batch, and I snagged the last one just for you, brother. <laughs> Damn, I got stolen beer in here. Right? Yeah. <laughs> now that you just admitted it. Good. All right. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Uh no doubt, man. No doubt. So, Kurt, uh, before we cut into it too deep, man, why don't why don't you tell our listeners, uh, along with a lot a lot of our boys, our click, and, and your following that are hopefully going to listen to this as well, uh, mm-hmm. who you are and what you're about. All right, man. Well, uh, I'm Kurt Geyer. Uh, I run the Working Class Bowhunter podcast, um, an audio podcast we've been doing for, fuck, I think going on four years now. Um, Shit, In my five, opinion, right? I think uh, we paved the way, and I might be wrong in this, people can argue, but I feel like we kind of paved the way against the industry standard in podcasting where, um, you know, we talk how people talk in hunting camp, and, and that sounds like super cliche because I hate that we're just being real. You know, you hear that shit all the time, and it's, <laughs> you know, you can tell when people force it, but Word. we kind of just have been talking how people talk and how we talk from um, basically from the get-go. And trying to make a comfortable podcast that doesn't make you cringe, uh, would you hear how awkward it is? And that was my main goal. Um, 
because when I went to search for a hunting podcast I like, they're all terrible, and that's what made me want to start one. And mine might be fucking terrible uh, as far as uh, some people are concerned, and that's fine, but we're just doing what we do, and uh, we'll always do it the way we do it. Um, Yeah, so we got an audio series, and then we have a video series on Carbon TV um, that comes out. We just finished season one, and we're getting ready to film season two starting at ATA show this year, so... Fuck yeah. That's so awesome. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. That's some of the best news, along with a lot of other good news this year, that just hit hit the mainstream, and I'm excited to see that. That's going to be badass. I can't wait. We- yeah, man. I'm stoked, man. Trying to hustle as hard as I can and just uh, kind of take it to the next level, or if not, just have fun at least. That's what it is, too, for the love of the game. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? For the love of the game. And, and that's that's one crazy aspect uh, uh, about this whole game is because most people, like you said, uh, you go to a different show and sometimes it feels forced because, you know, they want to match your level or relate, so to speak. And uh, sometimes that does happen, man. That's one thing I definitely noticed. And and uh, it just brings back all, all different, like, the beginnings. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, but we, for sure, man. Before we cut into that, though, I'm, I'm actually curious, uh, along with many, because uh, you got a long story to tell. Kurt, what sparked your interest in, when you first got in the game, the game of hunting? Oh, uh, like hunting in general? Yeah, yeah. Especially especially if you could transition to archery, that'd be great, man. Yeah, um, I was young, so a lot of it I don't like really remember in like super fine detail, but uh, I was out at one of my cousin's house. I was at my cousin's house, and he took his nephew on the other side of the family from me out hunting or whatever. And he had shot a, a, a young eight pointer and my dad grew up hunting small game, uh, when he was really young and kind of fell out of it as he got older. And we saw this buck sit in the back of the truck. And I just remember my dad, like, man, we need to give it into hunting, like back into deer hunting. And then next thing I know, we just, we dove head first into it. Like did the hunter safety course, got all set up, everything like that. Gun hunted for a couple of years. Uh, didn't have any luck. And then picked up a bow. Well, I, I remember I asked for a bow for Christmas before my dad even had one. And I was, like, thinking, yeah, I'm just kind of asking for one. It'll never happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just didn't think I'd ever get one. And they bought me, like, a starter bow. And then my dad was like, man, this is cool. We should get into it. Then my dad dove into it. And then I started bow hunting a year later. And uh, killed my first deer, like, my second day bow hunting. And then I just kind of decided there I was a bow hunter and not a gun hunter. And uh, that's kind of where it all took off man a uh, super cliche story but it's that's the truth that's so <laughs> awesome though the, the the truth is always the best story though in my eyes you know what i'm saying yeah for sure i mean i could make it up like another podcast and tell you it differently if you'd like but... <laughs> <laughs> hell no no <laughs> hell no the, those are the ones like you you get halfway through the episode if you even make it that far because they're talking about a certain subject and then you're like eh, no nah. next next <laughs> yeah i'm kidding but i'm I got to be hard on it. It's funny, man. Yeah. Well, sometimes you got to swipe left. You know what I mean? <laughs> nice. <laughs> you do, man. It's all good. That's why there's so many podcasts, man. That's the beautiful thing about it. There, people can be super into one and then not so into another, but, you know, that's the, the best thing about it. Nice. Nice. So what what uh, drove you to pick up a bow? Like, uh, what what inspired you? Quote, unquote, inspired. <laughs> uh, in the day, I would say the ability to hunt more oh, and the, inter- yeah. the interest and the challenge of it. And I was also, like, crazy into Monster Bucks when I was young. So, you know, I'm seeing all the guys with Team Real Tree hats out there hunting with a bow. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, it just seemed cooler to me. Right. You know, hunting videos are a big uh, influence on me when I was young. And uh, not so much anymore because I kind of like learn that's not reality but it got me interested enough to want to dive deeper into it you know what i mean yeah oh yeah, that's for sure that, that's how it was with me too also kurt like just just watching like the buck masters yep. on cassette and they would have Absolutely. all kinds of like yeah. crazy they would have all kinds of like funny ones for yeah, the young, young kids you got t-bone yeah. on there yeah just just cool things you know and in the in the I totally into it the same way that you were just watching the videos and stuff like that. And you're like, I want to know how to bow hunt. I want to get into it. I get it. Yeah, man, for sure. Those videos were so good for getting hunters back, like new hunters into the game. 
And uh, I don't know if the if the videos and hunting TV still has that impact as it did then. Um, I hope it does, but I, I just I don't really don't know. Hell yeah! Well, if I had to guess, I would say yeah because I mean um, now maybe podcasts are the new thing though for that. Yeah, yeah. Does, does, That's what I'm talking about. Like you're saying, there's a lot more avenues to do it though. There's podcasts and there's and there's YouTube, YouTube. and yep. there's. I mean, there's 101 different ways. Carbon TV, that's another great way, you know, if yeah. they found them, you know. Yeah, if anything, now it's easier, easy. It's, God damn, I got cotton mouth from this beer, boy. <laughs> <laughs> that weed nugget. <laughs> <laughs> it's easier to uh, to grab that content to get the interest in bow hunting, you know. Right. Yeah. No, I definitely agree, man. That's crazy. I, wouldn't you rather have it? 10 feet, 20 yards in oh, front yeah. of you, then we have a we have a friend here that owns a big farm, and he shoots deer at, like, 900 yards with a 338 Lapua. Like, how, I mean, yeah, it's cool, but I would rather, like, have that thing right in your face, the experience. acorns crunching. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's just totally different. See, yeah, I get, I get that still takes skill, but to me, it's not, it's not very cool. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. No, like, it's I, just like, nah. I mean, like your story, like you had the deer so – the buck that you shot this year, that 10-pointer, you had it so close that you had to put your heavy mask over your mouth to cover your breath smell that in the morning. You know, like that's that's insane to have a deer like that and you have to do something like that right then and there. I mean, you don't have to do that. What's scent control at 1,000 yards? Yeah, there isn't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there might be, but it doesn't really like, play in when you – I, I get it. Like I respect that type of hunting. I'm not like against it by any means, but to tell me that that's cooler than shooting a deer at 15 yards of the bow is like, yeah, okay. Yeah, when you just, it. yeah, you could see the ticks on them yeah. from where you're shooting them. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right. It's like fuck. Right. That that's when your natural instincts kick in. Bow hunting, you get animals that close, you can trick them. Your natural instincts, shooting something out a thousand yards, that you can you can teach yourself to shoot long ranges, but you can't teach the natural instinct of you know, fooling that buck at close range. Right. And that's like the thing of like buck fever. You get a different buck fever and the buck, the buck is actually in your face. You know, that's some like <laughs> yeah. deep primal shit that comes out of you from hundreds of years ago when people were killing them with sticks. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, exactly. it's like the closest thing you can get to that primal feeling. I mean, I'm, I don't know anything else to give you that feeling besides like a, like a, like a fist fight. Right, you know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and that's that's almost always all anger. You know, <laughs> yeah. we're we're not doing stuff out of anger. We're we're doing because we love it, and th- that's what it brings me to something you actually bring up all the time is is it's an intimate feeling. Like it, it, you get intimate with it because you become one with your bow. Yeah. And, and why don't why don't you go into that a little bit actually, so uh, these guys can get the realm, like the new listeners or new bow hunters getting into the game. Yeah, man, for sure. I, I said that, I don't know how long ago on the podcast, about, like, the intimate feeling you get, like, during, you know, with archery in general, shooting a bow at a target or uh, shooting a bow at an animal. It's um, a bow when you learn to love it and kind of become comfortable with it. it. There's an intimate feeling, not sexual, and that's the thing I think people took weird when I said that. Yeah, But yeah. it's, like, it's romantic almost as in, like, it's it flows, it's smooth, it's an extension of your body. It feels right. It feels good. And once you develop that connection with your archery equipment, you feel confident in it. And when you can put an animal on the ground with something that you love so much, it's just like a weird deep feeling where it's like, my, that's why my bows, I'm sentimental with them. And I'm weird with my bows. Like it's, it's very strange. Like no one comes in the house and just picks up my bow. Like I'm weird with it. Like, you know what I mean? Does that make oh, sense? Oh, kinda? absolutely. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. I don't let nobody touch my bow. Like, <laughs> like someone will grab a hold of it, and I, they'll, they'll be like, they'll like want to pull it back, and I'm like, Yo, no. whoa, don't touch that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's 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 your baby. Right. It's yeah, your it's baby. It's just a deeper connection with a piece of equipment that you love and trust. Even you have to love and trust it to be successful. Because if you don't, there's holes in your game. Right. And I just think that's so important. And I've heard guys say, like, oh, I don't get sentimental with my equipment. When I'm like, man, that's kind of at a fault to you. Because yeah. if I'm in tune with what I'm shooting, I'm more successful. Every Everything I shot at this season died from one arrow. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it's just I just feel stealthy as all hell with my bow right now. And it's, uh, a forest it's just a deeper feeling you get with, I mean, maybe, I've, I'm sure some people can relate with, like, a rifle or a shotgun or something like that, you know, like, 
there's that feel you care about your equipment. Right. Um, but a, a boat just has this old school, like romantic feel to it. Absolutely. I mean, you're like one with nature again, dude. It's like going back to like the Indian times. Like you have to, I get it. That's totally yeah, crazy. I mean, sure. look, look at like the military and stuff like that. They use their weapon every single day and they practice with it thousands and thousands of rounds. What's different than a bow? Like if you don't know how your equipment is and, and you're not one with it, like you're saying, then it's, it's useless. Yeah. That's a good analogy. That's probably like the closest thing, you know? Awesome, man. That's so cool. And it's 100 on that though. You know what I mean? Cause it, you can't just pick up a bow and shoot it like, I, I mean, not to knock Gohan, because I do, I do respect it as well. Especially, like, the muzzle loader, the one-shot-one-kill essence. Big old smoke yeah. cloud. Yeah, that's <laughs> old school, bringing it back. The muzzle loaders are badass. Dude. Fuck yeah. yeah, fuck yeah. You could, you could definitely take down some big-ass deer with that. <laughs> but uh, Yeah, the learning curve makes it more interesting with a bow, man. Exactly, because that, you have to shoot, I don't know how many times, a day, as, mu- as much as you can, and then shot after shot after shot. Constantly tweaking your equipment so this way it gets better and better zeros in. It's just insane. Yeah, yeah. Insane. Well, D-Rock, you were at our shoot this last year, and you saw, like, all the boys shooting 90, 100 yards. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, shit. We've done that a lot at our, like, just different practice ranges or whatever, and other guys are there. And they don't – you can tell they don't get it. It's like, well, you can only do that because your equipment. Well, mm. it's like, mm-hmm. all right, here, shoot it. Right. right. Yeah, exactly. Shoot 100 yards. Yep. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like – Man, I practice. I, I yeah. bust my ass. Yeah, and for you to sit there and be like, you only do that because your sight that you have on it. I'm like, oh, you're disrespecting me right now. So I, I actually hustle here, you know. Yeah, and, and that goes with any professional sport or anyone that's good at, at their craft, you know. To say that they're only good at something because of this and not acknowledge their hard work is, is disrespectful. Yeah, absolutely. Especially your skill in that. I mean, there's nothing. It's not easy to be shooting 100 yards, 90, 80 not even 60 yards. Right. I mean, that's not an easy thing with a bow and arrow, you know? Yeah, 40 is like, it's getting hard. And I had someone say that to me on Facebook. Um, it was the, I don't know if you guys remember the article that came out, like, is uh, our crossbows killing the tradition of bow hunting? It was like a debatable type of post. It was meant for people to debate in comments. And uh, someone tagged me in, it in a hunting group, said, you know, Kurt, what do you think about this? And uh, so I got notified after everybody commented on it, and someone commented, Modern compound bows require no skill with their lasers and all this and shit oh, and all that. No and <laughs> I did. I was. I actually responded to it, and I never do that. <laughs> and I was like, "You have to be kidding!" And they like <laughs> just never responded. I think they realized they were wrong. Like, oh shit! Like yeah. I just commented on something I know nothing about. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right, exactly. Oh man. And and speaking of that, forty yards. Even forty yards is hard. Why? For our listeners out there at the shoot, it was probably the hardest. 40 yard shot to make is that little little uh what was it like a three by three hole and and the big old nanny the big golden nanny (laughs) yeah doris yeah doris Doris. that's what it was yeah doris (laughs) yeah it's like a two inch circle (laughs) that's crazy yeah insane and what is it what is it is it like a metal a metal target or no yeah it's like quarter inch steel (laughs) that's awesome we we have one for ct bow hunting that we use oh yeah yeah (laughs) but this big old nanny doris man i never saw so much fireworks of carbon fiber splashing (laughs) in the (laughs) air in my life that shit was Doris months down i bet you 500 dollars in carbon arrows that day (laughs) that's awesome I think I threw like I I cut like a fourteen ring if you're like on a, like an ASA target or something. Yep. Like, yep. That's where I cut that circle and I said, "Hey, Whew. first person to throw a clean arrow through that, I'll give him a sin crusher bag." And then everybody lined up. I thought like maybe like a few people would. Everyone at the whole place lined up, and the, people I think knew from the year before to bring a junk arrow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and everyone just launched carbon at this thing, and it was just. A catastrophe. <laughs> That's awesome. Yo, it was crazy, and I was kind of pissed at first because I actually stepped away from the shoot to re up on drinks, refreshments of the good kind. And when I came, right. I, when I came back, I came back to everyone exploding the arrows on Doris. I'm like, yo, yo, yo! I, I had to crazy. jump in real quick, and of course, I exploded many too. So yeah, That's <laughs> awesome. Uh, it was so much fun, though. It was crazy, but. The the point of the story is forty yards is hard as well. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. 
Oh man, that's a long shot. <laughs> takes skill. It takes skill. For you sure. got to practice it. You can't just. You, yeah, I. You know, especially even like newer bow hunters getting into it. Because I have a bunch of friends or people that I know that are getting into it, and and they'll you know they'll try and shoot thirty yards and they can't even do it. You know, and it's like, wow, I can't believe all the years of shooting and I can now I'm shooting. 80, 100 yards, like it's nothing. And I'm like, I didn't realize how hard it actually was in the beginning when I started, when I was a kid. It's Yeah, the game can sneak up on you like that too. You're like, damn, I didn't, I've i been doing it long enough for it. You know, it's it's almost second nature to a point. But 30 yards, man, for new archers is a long shot. Oh, yeah, without and, a doubt. And 30 yards is like the spot where me and uh, the working class bow hunter boys are like throw, like we'll play uh, like pig. You right. know, against each other, like aim for that little last dot. That's yep. And that's like the perfect spot, and it, it, it hones the end when you're shooting at like, you know, dime sized spots on the target. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, especially so that when you get out to fifty or sixty, you're holding a tighter group because you're so used to aiming so small. Right, aim small, miss small. Yep, for sure. For that's sure. crazy. <laughs> That's gotta be so much fun. You guys, you get a lot of guys together. Like there'll be like five, six of you guys shooting all the time. Um, it didn't happen so much this year. It was most it was kind of scattered, but like I don't always do that to like Steve, you know, at random. But we used to uh, it would have been our first or second year podcasting. We went to every three D shoot we could in our area, um, and we just made it an event. Like, oh, hey, there's a three D shoot here on Sunday. We're going, and we'd drive wherever it was, and we'd all shoot against each other. And we had like a fake wrestling belt we battled for. That's awesome. Oh, hell yeah. Trevor and I did a lot of that this year. We'll have to get it. I like that wrestling belt idea. That's cool. Yeah. A little trophy or something. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, me too. And we just passed it back and forth after every 3D shoot. But you just get busier, man, and those shoots are harder to make. And, like, I didn't get to do one 3D shoot this last summer. It, oh. it was kind of a bummer, but it's just that's life. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and plus with the success you've been having, man. And before we get into that, Kurt, why don't you uh, shout, shout out your crew? Your crew that helps you day to day with with these podcast episodes, wh- whether it be, you know, uh, like you said, going to shoots or going to something you got to show up to, even carbon or podcast every day uh, crew. Yeah, man. So like the entire crew, what I consider like working class bow hunter is myself. Eric Hammond is one of my main co-hosts. Doug Schmidt or the mustache is one of the main co-hosts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if you watch our stuff, you know, Doug, just from the mustache. From the cookie uh, duster. <laughs> yeah, cookie duster. The womb broom, if you will. The womb uh, broom. <laughs> Stevie Moe, Cameron Tank, and Jordan Johnson. That makes up our entire podcast team um, as far as, like, from the regular audio all the way to the carbon. That's including, like, a two-in-one. Um, so, like, Cameron and Jordan and some of the other guys helping, uh, help film and produce and edit uh, the Carbon TV series. Uh, shout out Combination Creative. That's Jordan's company who does all that production work. That's awesome. And, uh, and now we, uh, we're we getting to the point where we're starting to push the podcast more than a podcast and push it as a brand. Um, title sponsor and you guys, which is uh, pretty fucking sweet. Fuck yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> we got uh, the Whitetail Experience on board and the boys from Buckstorm on board. Yeah. Uh, Hell South yeah. Dakota. That's awesome. That's a fucking lineup right there, yeah, bro. Yeah, dude. Shit. Yeah, so I just want to get the realest people possible in the industry, and it, even if right now if it's just like, hey, just wear our shit and talk about it once in a while, that's that's good enough for us. So, yeah, absolutely, yeah. dude, and dude, we appreciate I'm that. Pumped. I'm glad that we it's, get considered part of the team. Fuck yeah, man! It's a it's a slow expansion for eventually a major deal that we're gonna figure out here. It's a it's a slow expansion for something big that uh, I'm still mapping out in my brain. Oh yeah, I'm glad that you're allowed, allowing us to take the ride with you. Yeah, man, of course. And, and you what, guys are you? Go ahead. Also, <clears throat> go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. You go. You go. So you guys are uh, you guys were doing the podcast game right, uh, being so new to it. So it's pretty awesome to see. Thanks, man. We appreciate you to the fullest. We really appreciate. We that. have a Mexican. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have the token, man. Yeah. <laughs> True hustler. I don't have any Mexicans, dude. We just look like a bunch of racists. 
Got to add a little shade of color in your crew. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> we need D Rock come around more and be like, "Hey, we're not racist. We got this guy." We're <laughs> that's <laughs> that's how our application got accepted. We're not, <laughs> we checked Mexican. If Pia ever attacks working class Bonner, that's all they're gonna shit on us about. <laughs> Just white dudes with beards. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's crazy. I'm like, man. Oh, man, we have black friends. I promise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shit, I got the hood on lock. Yeah. I'm, I'm down here in the dirty water. Yeah. <laughs> We're good that's now. The new, that's the new uh, liberal attack on white people, in case you didn't know. <laughs> 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 We're all racist. Oh, God. <laughs> a little bit of Shabine and a Mexican, and you can go a far yeah. ways, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hey, this man. guy's dropping the end bomb. Nobody knows what to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if the people only knew the, the process before uh, I start the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, man. Good, good shit, though. Well, yeah, man. Hey, you know what? I've been dying to hear this story personally. And along with many people that follow, you know, all the listeners that follow on social media. And, you know, it's like one big, one big brotherhood, if you will. You're starting the new movement. We've been talking about that on, on the DL. You know, it's, it's something new to the industry that's much needed at a much uh, f- much more friendlier uh, level to get people in. Like you said, the, the realest motherfuckers that are out there for the greater good, for the love of the game. But um, I want to know about your big bucks, man. Yeah. Everyone wants to know about your big bucks. Oh, fuck. That's a hard, like, you just hit me very vague with that, like, you, just from this year? Yeah. 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 You showed us around, um, and we saw you had so many giants. Oh, fuck. You quit doing that to me right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I had a killer year, man. I did. I'm super thankful for it. Uh, it just it just worked out. You know, some years you struggle through them the whole time, and it's just, it'll beat you to death until you can't hunt anymore. And that's most of the times how bow season is. And, uh, I, I got lucky this year and kind of mapped my shit out a little smarter and just tried to be level-headed and, and calm and kind of just take each hunt as it is and really just wait for maybe something to fall into my lap, just use the knowledge that I already have and not overthink anything. Because it's, it's, it's really easy to like play all these scenarios in your head and I need to be here and here and here and here and be all over the place, which is what I did last year. And, and in my opinion, it kind of fucked me out of getting a big deer. Um, but it's just kind of like my inner anxiety to try and get it done. Uh, but this year I kind of just like chilled back. And uh, my, the first buck I shot this year was October 20th. I think um, I sat up in a spot where I thought that deer might be moving through with the wind. I think it was a straight west wind that day. And I was expecting deer to come off this field and come up on this hillside in bed, which I was sitting on. And uh, I actually had a buck come from the where the wind was blowing. So he wasn't moving with the wind to his face, which is kind of bizarre to me. But he was moving quick. Um, so in my eyes, I thought he was coming up to bed the wind did change that morning, so I thought he was uh, in a hurry to switch his bed locations to get the wind right for him, and I intercepted that. And that's, uh, awesome. that's my thought on it anyway. He came in at like 12 yards and smoked him, and he died right in front of me, which was like the craziest shit ever. Um, what do you think he was the, on? What's that? What do you think he was on? Like, what do you think he was chasing, you think? No, I, I think he was moving because I think where he was bedded, because it was a morning hunt. I think he got in off the field from feeding, and I think he went to bed, and then the wind changed. And I think he was oh, like, oh, that... fuck, this wind's not good for me anymore. So I think he was jotting up the hill past where I was because nice. I was on a terrain feature where the deer had to move through. So when the wind changed, he got up to move to make the wind right for him so he could bet again, and I intercepted him on the way to do that. Oh, awesome. Nice. That's I just, awesome. I just wanted you to elaborate a little more because we get a lot of new listeners out here in the East Coast because, I mean, it's kind of fucked up because we're rated R – and we're explicit content, but we really want to help, especially new guys coming in. So we get a lot of different feedback, and, and that's why I just want to Shabing. cheers to that, D Rock. <laughs> yeah, but uh, well, being real, man, being real is more comfortable. So more people will listen if you're just being real about things and you're not yeah. forcing it a certain way. But um, yeah, really, I, I think I intercepted him and in a wind change, and that's one thing I look for. Excuse me, 
his uh, hard wind changes are, are a big deal. You know, if you see that on your whatever app you use in HuntStand or Onyx or whatever, whatever, if you see like in a two hour span, you see the wind change really hard. You know, deer that are bedding in one spot for that wind, all of a sudden that wind doesn't work for them anymore, so they have to get up and move. Yeah. So, so, so if if you're in a spot where it could, your wind is good the whole time for that deer's move, or what you think could be that deer's move, it's it's a it's a great interception. Hell yeah. Did, and yeah, and that's awesome. It's I didn't to, even ever think plan, of it. Yeah. And it's hard to plan and unique to plan because you almost have to check your weather day by day, which. You almost should be anyway, but it's uh, it doesn't always work that way. It just worked that time for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah, we got it. And getting it, yeah, and getting it that that way. That's what I was trying to. I'm trying to play it in my head like different areas that that would work, and it's like that's crazy. You have you really have to plan ahead of time for that. Holy crap! Yeah, like for for example, where I was, it was a ravine, and to the northwest of me, the ravine was so steep that the deer, when it cut down, the deer had to cut south of that hard cut of the ravine and cut between me and that ravine, and that's where I shot him. Wow. Nice. That's nice. awesome. For, forest ninja, straight up. And that was the big 10-pointer? <laughs> straight up. That was the yeah, big 10. It's shit like that that, I don't know, I feel like I'm trying to, I'm trying my best to get better at looking for more spots like that, um, but it's hard. Sometimes your property doesn't let you do that shit, and you can't help that, you know? That's that's the worst when you when you have a good shot and you can't you can't go towards that side of the property. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's definitely like a, a heartbreaker right there. I feel like that's kind of, might be the, like the ninja tip of the day right there. That was so much great information. You kind of just blew all three of <laughs> no. our minds over here. Yeah, no. like, that was a ninja tip of the no, day in my eyes right there, man. That was that is a whole bunch of info. that was. A lot and, to think about and grass. That is I, so I, true. I was like lost for words trying yeah. to like catch it in my head. I'm like, hold on. Yeah, like, I never, <laughs> never thought of that. Yeah, that's, that's good. <laughs> you know, and all I'm doing, man, honestly, is I can be like, oh, yeah, I thought of that. I'm just reg- regurgitating bullshit that I've of heard other people say. And then I've just applied it enough that it works, which goes to prove that you, be, you can be told something or taught something, but you never fully learn it until you go and put it into action. Hour, hours in the woods. Yep. Hours in the woods. Boots on the ground. Yeah. Yeah, hours in the woods is super important. But uh, one person I have to give credit for, like, basically really opening my eyes to that, like, tactic is Clark Cummins. He's, a, in my opinion, a local legend to our area. Um, he's on Respect the Game TV and Sportsman's Channel, um, part of our uh, lead archery family. And uh, he was talking about quartering winds and wind changes like that on one of our podcast episodes. And it kind of was one of those moments where I'm like, oh, fuck. That makes perfect sense. So now I'm always trying to apply that quartering wind tactic to uh, pretty much every hunt I can or any stand set or whatever, uh, hang and bang or whatever I can come up with. I'm trying to apply that quartering quartering wind setup, which basically means like make that, that deer thinks that wind is working for him, but it's also working for you too because a big buck won't travel with the wind to his back. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, man. Shout out to Clark too, man. He's he's the silent killer. The the oh, dude, he is for sure. Yeah, the the less is more, right? Mm-hmm. Hell yeah, he, he's he, one of the best deer hunters I know, man. He he kills some giants every year. He's on it, and his son is too. His son's following him. <laughs> Just actually has a bigger deer than him, which is crazy. <laughs> but <laughs> you know awesome. why though? Someone did the work. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean. He was, it's in his blood and Hell yeah. Clark's right there. And it's just, it's a cool, uh, cool t- uh, team up at that point. Yo, imagine being, being Clark's son and he's teaching you all his, all his secrets, like open book to you and, and, <laughs> dude. and practically holding your hand to it. Right. Dude, watch. Matt, 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 Matt though, dude. Yeah. He's is a straight killer, man. Hell yeah. yeah. Clark will drop him off to go- uh, to snow goose hunt, drop him off in the morning and won't pick him up till dark, and the dude will be by himself, and he'll have a pile of snow geese. Nah, That's no, awesome. Oh, yeah. And That's the kid's like 13 or 14. He yeah. might be so awesome. I think he's 14, right? Uh, yeah, he might be 14 now, but I know when he killed that big buck, he was like 13. Hell wow. yeah. That's so just, awesome. Just land. The kid kills more turkeys than anyone I've ever met. Hell yeah. That's We're so... going to see Matt on TV. We're going to see him on TV in our lifetime, for sure. Oh, he already is on TV, dude. Oh, where? <laughs> where at? Yeah, he's on so, Respect the Game. He killed 196 inch last season on Respect the Game. Wow. Hell yeah. On Hell camera? Yeah. Broken arm with his arm Hell in the yeah. cast. Wow. <laughs> wow. 
that's badass, man. Def- definitely yep. someone to look up to for sure. That's awesome. At oh, 13. Yeah. And, and I know when he's older, it could go either way, you know, as a son to a successful person, especially successful dad. And, and then uh, you, mo- most it could go either way. You either live in a shadow or you learn what he takes and applies it to the field his own way. And what you're talking about, right, Kurt, is is him twisting it his way. And he's a fucking savage. Straight up <laughs> yeah. savage. No yeah. doubt. No doubt. He's a, it's a, it's a special team up they got going on. That's awesome. <laughs> Father-son team. That's so cool. So let's let's get to your other buck. What about the other buck, Kurt? Yeah, man. Uh, so I shot that first one on October 20th. And so basically what I've been doing a lot lately – or, you know, coming into this season and during this uh, the season we're in, I just started studying, like, topo maps, like, super heavily. And uh, What are topo maps for for the new guy, if you don't mind? just shows you, like, uh, really to just at a basic level, it just shows you the hills on your property. Like, shows you where the ravines are and how steep they are. And the closer together the lines on the map, the steeper the hill. Um, essentially, it can tell you, it can show you where... Um, some natural terrain. It just tells you where natural terrain features are, basically. So what are you um, looking for on those topo maps when you're looking at them, Kurt? I'm looking where the lines come together and where they gap apart, really. It's hard to explain it without, like, showing, you know, for, for podcasts. I'm looking for tight lines and gaps. Yeah. And that sounds super generic, and uh, I guess it's hard to explain. But let, let me explain my scenario where I hunted to kill this deer. All right, where? So over the summer... I was studying the topo map and trying to learn how to read them. And there's a spot where there's a creek that curves hard one way, curves hard to the north, then cuts hard to the south, and then cuts down. And in that, I could see, reading the the topo lines, how it got really steep coming down to that creek, which is like the bluff that the creek carved out where all the lines are really close together. And then there's a spot right before that where the line gets wide, which shows to me a flatter spot and from where the low spot is to where that flat spot is it's a hard pinch along that creek where the creek carves back in to the south so what i learned i hunt i hung a stand there over the summer sat there early october and on an afternoon hunt got spotted by a big buck because my stand was in a not the spot i should have had it so what happened was that buck spotted me. He backed out. I pulled that. I pulled that uh, that stand down. And moved it. I moved it closer to the creek. And so basically, what it's doing there with the top of lines that I read is I'm kind of jumping back and forth between that buck side and the story. So sorry about that. But no, no, it's all good. We're tuning in. Basically, the the creek ran up to that flat end and made a pinch to where any deer that's running the end of that bluff towards that creek has to go through that spot, or he crosses the creek. So either he's crossing the creek every time or he's walking the ridge along the creek is basically what's going on there. And I could see that through the top of the line. So I moved my stand and I moved it to where on a south wind, I was on the north end of this trail the deer were using on that creek. So on a south wind, the deer think that wind is good for them because they have the creek to the north of them as security. And it's a long draw coming to them where they're walking. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. 100%. Yep. We're, so we're the picking up walking, what you're putting down. Yep, so where the deer are walking, if it's a south wind, they can smell everything from the field into the woods to them up to the creek. So they know nothing's going to get them from the creek side. So I set up on the north side of that trail, which would have been creek side. So anything south wind is working for them, and it's working for me. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Everyone's happy. Yeah, yeah everyone's absolutely. happy. <clears throat> everyone's happy. So... November 3rd, I hunted that stand in the morning on a south wind. I didn't see a deer. And I put a cell cam up there because I knew deer were only going to move in there, in there on a south wind for the most part. So what I did, I'm like, well, I didn't see anything here in the morning on a south wind. I'm going to go to another spot that's good for a south wind because I don't. if I didn't see a deer here, I'm going to change my luck. Which cell cam did you use? 
Uh, it's honestly some shit Moultrie thing that puts out <laughs> the worst quality photos, but it, <laughs> but the, the battery done. lasts a long time, and that's really. I just need to see a picture of a deer, and if I can see a picture of a rack, I'm I'm happy. <laughs> shout, shout, out yeah. shout out Walmart! Yeah, shout out Walmart. Yeah. Yeah. again. Yeah, right, right. So I'm sitting in another spot on a south wind in the afternoon on November third. <clears throat> And I'm sitting there, and I've seen a couple good bucks. Nothing uh, I wanted to shoot, but some good deer. I check my uh, my app, and I see a good buck <laughs> where I sat this morning in shooting light 10 yards underneath that fucking stand. Wow. And so I'm kicking myself because I wanted to sit there, but I changed up because I sat there in the morning, blah, blah, blah. So kind of bummed out. What do you do? Gun you know? venture. Jesus. What do you do? So I'm driving home kicking my own ass calling my buddies it's downpouring rain by the way at this point now um it's supposed to rain hard all night into the next morning and then we're supposed to get a break in the afternoon uh late afternoon uh, just like a couple hour break so i'm calling austin chandler i'm calling my dad i'm calling ross bigger um all my buddies i look up to and i'm like hey i'm gonna fucking sleep in the morning since it's pouring rain I'm going to go in at that break and rain and try and get in there and see if I can't put an arrow in that buck. He's going to do the same thing. It was set for a south wind to the next day. So what I did was I could drive around that whole field and park where I normally do, but with the wind and I knew that buck was probably in there, I parked way the fuck out, sprayed. I sent crush all my clothes, sprayed down to sink crusher spray, jaunted way out around in this field, and then once I got to that timber edge, it was everything saturated wet. So once I got to the timber, I just, like, took my time, my sweet, sweet time to get in there. Like, I made sure I didn't snap a stick, nothing, climbed in, and I'm sitting there in the tree. Fuck, 45 minutes, and I hear a snap. And I look down, and he's way north of me down in the bottom part, like, past the steep lines on the top of the map into the flat. But where the creek is, where uh, way north, and I look down and that buck standing there just fucking a tree up, damn, and I'm like, damn, just yeah, and I'm like, oh shit, there he is. Well, I range him. I got an opening. He's at 56 yards, and I'm like, fuck, do I? I rolled my dial to 56. I'm like, I've killed deer at further. Like, and then I, I'm sitting there. I'm like getting ready to draw. I'm like, no, don't, don't fucking do this. Don't shoot at him. He's 56 yards. Let, he's coming. Let him Let him chill. <laughs> so he goes back and he's in some brush. But he's coming down. He's coming down wind. You got to remember because it's a south wind and he's north of the trail where I thought he was going to be. Yep, so yeah. he's down in the creek bottom and my yeah. wind's blowing to him. But I am yeah, on a ridge. Wind. So you're over him. Hopefully. I'm over him, but shit can swirl when you get up near those creeks. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so I'm getting nervous. You know, he's a big buck. He's a five and a half year old is what I guess. And he comes in and he gets to where, like, by the way, I'm watching this deer, not dog a doe. He's not chasing a doe. He's not feeding. This deer is just doing big buck things casually in the woods, which is a crazy thing to watch. Yeah. Just walking. That's awesome. Yeah. Just walking. And he he would walk for 15 yards and stop and look for five minutes it was like the coolest thing I've ever seen. Well, then he gets to where he's about 30 yards and I got like a pocket in there. I'm like, dang, you could slip that in there. You, you know, my, my, the devil, on my shoulders like, yeah, you could slip an arrow in there, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like, you know, yeah. Hey, you could do it. You could shoot him right there. He's standing right there. It's 30 yards. It's a chip shot. And I'm like, nah, don't fucking do it. Like he's going to come. Well, I realized which way he was going. He's going on the hardest pinch possible from my stand to the Creek. And there's, 20 yards between me and the creek. I'm like, he's got to go here or he's going to go this way. Well, once I realized which way he was cutting was the way I was hoping he was going to, I spun around, drew back, tried to stop him. You know, I'm doing the butt, butt. And then he, he finally stopped. I launched off him at 17 yards. Arrow just pops right through him. He runs down the ridge of the creek, runs over, and that was it. That, that's all I could see. He, he disappeared down the hill, and everything in there is wet. So I can't hear if he crashed. I can't hear anything. Lights out. And <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know. I thought the shot, shot was far back. I heard the diaphragm pop. I'm freaking a little. I'm calling people. 
I get down because we had a rainstorm coming in a half hour. I check the arrow. It's kind of gritty like liver, but it still looks good. The board looks all right. I give them an hour and 15 minutes. It's, I got lucky. It didn't rain. I go in, see him bedded run in there celebrate like super stoked on this buck he's like a 150 class 10 um mm-hmm. chocolate rack and uh it just worked out man that's, that's so awesome a tagged out season right there that's incredible, awesome incredible story that's all <laughs> yo and and you know what that's crazy because it was all over social media uh-oh you made it to to our next segment. How corny is that? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> the, the ninja tip of the day. The ninja tip of the day. Shabeen. Shabeen. How are those shabeens? Actually, before we get to ninja tip of the day. Delicious. <laughs> Delicious. Trump's two-handed his over there. Look yeah. at him. <laughs> Holding it like something he shouldn't be holding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's loving it. Ninja tip of the day, Kurt. What's good? Yeah. What's good? Oh, I'm giving a ninja tip? Yeah. yeah. Ninja tip of the day. Damn, you snuck that up on me like a fucking ninja. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, we already covered it. Make the wind work for you, but make the wind work for the deer. Hell yeah. You you heard yeah. it on you heard it on the East Coast Bow Hunting Podcast. Straight from working class bow hunter is work that wind. <laughs> that's awesome. Honestly, you know man, what? That's, that's like that's a bulletproof setup. If you can get a spot, and not everyone has that spot, if the wind can work for the deer to where it works for you too, you're going to be successful sooner or later. You Absolutely. just have to be. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. As long as you're not like getting in there like a dick bag and kicking everything over on your way in, you're going to have good luck. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. why, why, why they got to be dick bags, yo? Why they got to be dick bags? The fuck? <laughs> Just sneak in like a Mexican, get in there and kill your deer and get the hell out of there. That's it. There you go. There you go. Bring your shovel. You might have to dig a tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> hey. hey, I didn't say swim, man. <laughs> nah, why you think I wear a towel on my back? Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Don't, don't hate on yourself that hard. I was kidding you. Now you made me feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, hey, all I know is I'm American. It's just I was Mexican first. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, there's your ninja tip of the day. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man, this is great. Yo, That's Kurt. a great segment. <laughs> you like that? The ninja yeah, tip. I do. <laughs> oh, man. We're, we're really humbled by by you uh, just taking the time out of your busy schedule, man. Because, I mean, you know, you... You got to keep your people happy, your family happy, your wife happy, do the show, go to your job, hunt, scout, check your, I mean, I can only imagine the day to by day for Kurt Geyer. Ah, man, it all levels out, you know, it, it does it feels busy at first, like when I, you tackle all this stuff, but eventually it just kind of levels out to being normal. Fuck yeah. Thanks for coming on again, man. Yeah, man. I, yeah, hell yeah. Dude, I'm you. tagged out. What the fuck, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you got to get some type of excitement, right, Kurt? <laughs> yeah, man. My podcast isn't doing it. I'm like, just let me come on your guys' show every week. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll do it. <laughs> you know what? And that's a perfect transition, man. Why, why podcasting? I mean, perfect time now because you're tagged out. So what better time to focus more on what you need to do, you know, behind the scenes, so to speak. So why podcasting? Um, like, why did I start it, or why in general? Let's start from the beginning. We got all night. Where? Uh, actually, you know what, Kurt? So, sorry to throw you all over the place. I'm all over no, the place right. tonight. You got that proper in front of you, or no? So you got that proper, right? You got it right in front of you? Oh, yeah. I got it, man. Hell, yeah. Uh, you taste that yet, or no? I've, uh, I've given it a, a little sample. Yeah? And, and, <laughs> and what do you think? What do you think for, uh, about whiskey? I, uh, dude, I'm not a whiskey guy, but, uh, I appreciate the, uh, I appreciate the, uh, the meaning behind the whiskey. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know what? That probably makes no sense, but it does no, to me. It, it does because I'm going to elaborate on that because when I came out to the shoot and you, and you took me into your home with, with open arms, well, Steve with open arms, uh, but you, I mean, straight up. <laughs> Picked me up at the airport and shit. That was hot as fuck. I was like, damn, this dude, you know, p- treating me like his his best friend right off the rip. You know what I mean? And that's what it's about. 
going to the to to your house and shit. And what did I bring? Everyone knows by now. I know I know TJ out there knows what's up. <laughs> <laughs> That that Eliza Craig. Oh yeah, <laughs> right. fuck. yeah. Okay, sorry. That was my cue, and I fucked <laughs> yeah. it. Back. No, 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 it's all good. It's all right, man. It's all right. I think uh, I think uh, fucking Austin Chandler still has that at his bar. Oh no shit. That's awesome. Good. good. Yeah, Austin. Actually, I had a I had a a drink with him too. Some Elijah, I think. At yeah, the didn't shoot. you leave, you left that with us or something, and we took it to his place? <laughs> yeah. And it's in his bar now. He probably drank it all already. That's awesome. We might have drank it all the last time we filmed the Carbon episode there. <laughs> That's true. That's true. What was that, number five? I think that was number God five. God damn, this guy's good. Yeah, you're right. TJ Younger, yes. You are right. You're <laughs> pulling it all together. That's awesome. Oh, How man. do you remember that? <laughs> uh, dude, I, like, I always say, I mean, you look at my IG name, it says it all. Well, D-Rock WCB sh- Soldier. Soldier. Yeah, yeah. Right. It was straight yeah soldier. you're about it, man. I appreciate yeah. that, too. I really do. Hey, man, it's spreading the good word. You know, it. it's... You could, so to speak, call me a, a product of, of the WCB, you know? Thanks, man. That means a lot to me. It really does. We, we want to make a family out of the whole thing, you know? And uh, there's I mean, a lot of, like, all of our, like, diehard listeners. We try to, like, make them part of that family as best as we can. So just if they're super involved, it makes it easy. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you can't get more involved I wish you were here so you could see this, Kurt. These two, I'm looking across the studio, and the, these two are wearing, one of them's wearing, can't ri- uh, f- uh, trip into a fi- uh, 150, and the other one's wearing a hang and bang t-shirt. That's I mean, how up. much more support can you get? Yeah. Here? <laughs> That's awesome. That's, That's awesome. Well, when you boys come to Iowa Classic, we're in a podcast a ton, so we'll get that, uh, we'll get the whole family feel real fast. Yo, uh, awesome. we're bringing, yeah, we're bringing the whole East Coast with us. Yeah. <laughs> us you and better bring some of this assassin. beer, too, man. If you want to see some people fucking <laughs> I, appreciate some East Coast beer. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. we're we'll bringing the Shabin. We're going to pack that thing full of cases of Shabin up for the ride out there. <laughs> <laughs> Without a doubt. Yo, Kurt, real quick, let's let's pop one, man. Crack crack that uh, proper. Oh, jeez, here we go. Let's Uh-oh. take a shot, man. <laughs> we, have, we have a lot to celebrate this year, so cheers. Salud. Oh, that's warm. Could you hear that in the mic? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. You're the cork. Oh, man, that's good. You want to pop this, Ryan? I'll pop a little. Yeah, send it around. Yeah, we got to send it around. Here we it actually it is. You like that shit? Mm-hmm. Hell, yeah. Yeah, things are getting... Than... I'll get better than bourbon. Oh, yeah? Personally. Yeah, yeah. It's made straight out of Ireland, too. Hey, thanks again for the shit. t-shirts, Kurt. I can't I can't thank you enough for those. Oh, the swag? Oh, yeah. The swag. Is the awesome. swag, the hanging bag. That's awesome. I, I threw mine. So Ryan called me today and was like, hey, dude, there's a lot of deer movement over by one of the food plots. So we're like, all right, cool. Let's go down there. So the first, the last thing I throw in my truck is my hanging bang t-shirt, and you can't trip into 150 because there's a big chocolate horn, like 160 hanging around. So I'm like, if I'm going to kill if I'm gonna kill the big deer, I want to be wearing the t-shirt. So I just threw it in, I threw it in the truck today <laughs> that's awesome man there's some luck look at the podcast is a real thing for some reason so it could have worked out yeah it really is uh, i have a story for that actually uh, if no one minds me speaking for a little bit no, go ahead mexican i don't want to i don't want to take over because yo i'm fully indulging it in kurt's convo because he he's got plenty of tips and just catching up right kurt yeah, oh, yeah. Shabine. Shabine. He's cracking the Shabine. Oh, you guys heard that, huh? <laughs> no, we know what that I'm is. I'm into the old dance party galaxy dry hop. Oh. Fuck yeah. That's a good one. That's one of my favorite. Hell yeah. Damn, you're making me want to drink a beer now. Oh, that's tasty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So what was I touching on, actually? I forgot. You had some story that you were going to tell? Oh, the luck of the podcast, yeah, yo. Yeah, there you go. The luck of the podcast. It's funny you mentioned that because it was late season, there was snow on the ground, and the temperatures were low. And it was actually a very, very still day, not a lot of wind. I Actually, I think it was uh, late, no, early December. And I'm up in a tree. I'm listening to, uh, I can't call what episode, but you guys are running the live, Kurt. It's, it's you, Stevie Moe, Eric, and I think Doug was in the background. And you guys are doing the pre-live and whatnot. And uh, I'm up in a tree just watching with my earbuds in. I'm like, you know, I'll, sa- I'll sacrifice. I got one in, one out. So this way I could still hear any leaf crunching and whatnot. 
and I'm just watching the live feed and everything, and then you guys are about to kick it into recording mode, and I start hearing the leaves crunching, man. And this was last year. I had such a successful... I tagged out last year on the basic permits for Connecticut, and it was crazy because I, I had to leave the live, shoot the buck, and then come back to the live. Like, I put my phone down, shot the buck... <laughs> And, it, and it's, it's towards sundown. He ran like a bat out of hell. You could tell double lung because the, the blood was just spewing out. I'm like, well, I got to wait 30 minutes anyways, more or less. So I went back to the live feed, and you guys were just, all right, and we're going to record. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, dude, I remember, I don't know if we called it out during the live or it, it was later was after the podcast or during the podcast. Steve or someone was like, dude, D-Rock shot a buck during our live or something like that. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, no shit. How crazy is that? Look at the fucking podcast. That's, That's crazy. awesome. Oh, man. man, you know what it is? Like, we have a lot of people that will be like, hey, man, I need some luck at the podcast. And really, really, all it is is just send positivity to people. Hell yeah. And That's what it's That's about. so awesome, dude. You know, like, there's people that are like, man, I haven't shot a buck. I haven't seen one. I'm like, dude, if you hustle and play it smart, you will get a chance. You'll get an opportunity. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. really the the basic level. But that's the thing, too, is like we want to motivate people to like push themselves to the, the next level in the bow hunting game. That they that, that What's next for them in the bow hunting level? You know what I mean? Right, yeah. whatever dreams they have. So it's like we're not trying to shit on anybody. We want, that's why we have this podcast and talk about shit. We want to really motivate people and uh, really? push them to their next level. Yep. And I just like to see people be successful with a bow, man, that, and they get that fulfillment. And when someone writes us a message like, oh, yeah, I listened to your podcast and it helped me. Like, oh, I heard Clinton Casper on there in late season hunting, and I went and killed a buck late season. That's the coolest thing of all time. Nice. Oh, that's, I totally agree. That's why I started CT Bow Hunting with Jeff and everything like that when he had started that. Um, and that's what it, that's where we decided to go was just the positivity and reinsurance everybody – you know, like just helping them out and teaching them what we can, especially being new and just being part of it, you know, and just sending those positive vibes to them. Like, it will happen. Keep doing what you're doing. No doubt, man. That's what it's all about. Shabeen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sorry. <laughs> Sorry it, was seen... a, it was a perfect pause. I had to do it. <laughs> you should have seen the I way he a... set up for that, though. I need another beer. And I, I need it. I need a beer anyways. I got caught mouth like a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you wanted this. No, no. The bourbon I'll save for later because okay. I don't want to get too sloppy because I, I feel this is going to be a long episode. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm in for the long haul. As long as you give me piss breaks, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the pee breaks. We, we, we got a good idea for the background music. The, the three of us take them. You don't even know it. <laughs> that's what's nice about having a crew man I, you know what I mean this is, I, I, I take I bet you I take a well not so much I can't say every episode I take yeah. a piss often on our show and people don't even know because half the time Steve or or somebody else is rambling yeah <laughs> <laughs> we get we get the song the rambling man out when that happens that in a while no we had that in a while. <laughs> yeah you're kind of quiet this time Ryan yeah a little bit <laughs> actually look, you're getting your phone ready though actually <laughs> wait 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 no 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 Kurt this is Ryan. Ryan meet Kurt. Hey, Kurt. <laughs> Kurt, good to meet you. Ryan. Welcome, welcome to podcasting, man. <laughs> this, this is Ryan the porn star. He's, <laughs> the reason we call him that, I, I called him that since day one, and the only reason I called him that is like, I, you know, it's one of Trev's friends, so I'm like, oh, here we go, another fucking Connecticut hillbilly. <laughs> and then he, and he walks into the room I'm like, damn, this motherfucker's a fucking stud. <laughs> you know? I'm like, damn. All right. So I'm like, what's up, Ryan? Ryan the porn star. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was because I was a cable guy. I thought it was because I was a cable guy. Yeah. <laughs> no uh, mustache. He, he just a mustache? Said, no, got, he's got a full beard. I got a beard. Beard rides. Oh, beard rides. Lumberjack <laughs> theme, I like it. Okay. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, I thought it was only proper to introduce you guys. Yeah. Um, he, he's he's our like good version Stevie Mo. You know what I mean? Like the the yeah. in 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 shape Stevie Mo. <laughs> <laughs> like contributes to society, Stevie Mo. <laughs> yeah. He's a cable guy, so don't go too far. Hey. 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 He helps us with the good hey, internet connection. You got here. you got internet right now. How'd this cable get up in your room right oh, now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. So what's good, Kurt? What's good in well, the hood think, over there? I don't know where we're at, man. Uh, 
nothing else has changed over here where I am. If, if is what you mean is my hood, if you mean that literally. Um, <laughs> yeah. I do. I'm being I, a dick. No, I do. <laughs> Stop being a um, dick bag. <laughs> <laughs> nothing's changed, man. We're just hustling out here, really. It's. Uh, I know we were going to jump into the whole podcast topic. I don't know if you were still cutting to that or if we were going to yeah, do some proper 12 here for... Well, I mean, if you're going to sip again, I'll, I'll take another sip. <laughs> I'm, I'm just being an asshole on a backfire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'll do it. I'll do one with you. Yeah? All yeah, right. I'll prove it here. I'll pop it into my mic. I don't even hear it. All right, word. Oh. I like that was... That's nice. Yeah. Can you hear the glug glug? No. <laughs> no, I don't hear that. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I know you too well, Kurt. Uh, here, here's mine. <sighs> that shit's good, man. All day that long. last one wasn't as good as the first one. <laughs> <laughs> Tastes like Conor McGregor sweating it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you sipping on the same stuff, uh, Rebel Yell? No, he's what's that? What, what are you oh, sipping on there, Kurt? Uh, well, besides the proper twelve, I got the uh, baby seal dance party galaxy dry hop. Oh, oh, there you go. I, I like that one. I like that one. I'm on my fourth shabim or whatever <laughs> they, the name they, is. So. They catch up to you. Oh yeah. <laughs> Did you eat dinner? I had a midwestern slice of Casey's pizza there when I got off work, but other than that, no. Oh, so you're feeling nice as fuck right yep. now, then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling working class, man. I feel like I work for my money on a weeknight. You know what I mean? That's what's a- up. Amen, brother. Yep. The American dream right yep. there. And people wonder why I always talk that I'm Mexican. It's like, shit, motherfucker. This is my dream come true. I'm American. <laughs> I- I'm out in podcast lane. I'm chilling with Kurt Geyer in the working class <laughs> with my homies, Trev and Ryan, like, it doesn't get much better than that, man. And drinking that shabine. I know. It's crazy. Free beer. I mean, thank you, America. <laughs> that is awesome. Okay. Hell yeah, man. Damn. So what What else you got going on uh, coming up, you know, in the off season, so to speak? You got ATA coming up, right? Yeah, dude. ATA is coming up. Um, a ton of podcasts planned for them. I, man, we're going to have a ton from ATA. Um, ATA is always a blast. You guys got to get out there one of these days. Um, we're teamed up with Redline Marketing, so we'll be in their uh, their room podcasting. Um, got some Carbon TV episodes planned for that show. Big Mike gonna be there too. Oh fuck yeah! Hell um, yeah. Hopefully, he kicks the shit out of Stevie Mo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got uh, po- <laughs> we have podcast planned for the Big Time Booth. Uh, we're gonna do some jumping around. We need a little bit. I'm trying not to schedule the whole show so I can get actually get out and walk around. Um, but our mornings are booked. I got. <laughs> We're going to have, like, a minimum of 20 episodes being cranked out of ATA, which is going to wow, be insane. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah, I might that's just, like, awesome. dive bomb the podcast game and just release them all at once. That's it. So you're um, doing, like, I've, full-time podcasting at that point? Dude, it's going to be it's gonna be so fun but so exhausting. You know what I mean? It's going to be, like, I'm going to have to drink beer at 7 in the morning to just, like, drink a beer, drink a monster, drink a beer, drink a monster to My keep man. me going and, and fun through the whole thing. <laughs> a, a little PDA... P- Pedialyte with water on the side. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Like a, a Gatorade or something. Who knows? Um, we have a ton, that's always a good time. We got uh, some big episodes planned for that. And then, Shubby. you know, that's the start of trade show season for us. We don't hit a ton, like, not like what a lot of hunting shows hit. But we're going to hit Iowa Classic, um, I think Ohio. Um, almost positive we're going to hit Wisconsin Classic in Madison. What and about we'll Pennsylvania? Nah, we can't. We can't swing Come it. Come on, we can't swing it. Ah. Um, well, well, Kurt, we what's going on at the Iowa? What's going on at the Iowa Deer <laughs> Classic? Oh, you, you boys are about to get woke. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's going to happen. I'm willing uh, to get woke up. <laughs> the Iowa Classic in Des Moines. Um, man, if you can make it out there to your listeners, man, I know it's, a lot of them are the East Coast, so it's a it's a far, far jaunt to get to Des Moines, Iowa. But if you're in the Midwest, if you're even in Ohio, get out there, man. It's an awesome show. It gets bigger every year. Uh, we're going to be podcasting out in the open. We're going to have a booth. So if you just go out there to kick it, to check it out and meet people and see all those giant Iowa deer, swing by our booth. Um, all you guys will be in there. We're going to be podcasting and 
drinking beer. Hey, we'll give you a free beer and some stickers and you know, who knows? Maybe if, you, if you're a hot chick, we'll give you a t-shirt or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you, I can say a lot with that, but I won't. I can say a lot with that, but I won't. And if you're really lucky, Ryan will give up a uh, a Shabin. <laughs> and, hey. and for the la- and for the ladies, he'll change his t-shirt right there in front of the ladies. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but really, though, Iowa show is awesome. Um, all those trade shows, we have a blast, dude. We just walk around and we just. We don't try to be anything we're not. We talk to everyone like they're our best friend, and that's really, I think, what the hunting industry should be oh, yeah. uh, when, oh, it, when it boils down to it. Sharing hunt stories and bullshitting and, and really just the camaraderie of uh, just being real. I don't know. That's, that's that super stereotypical like saying again, but just be who you are, and if you got to act like somebody else, you're not meant for this game. So Hell yeah. I, exactly. I'll tell you that. I've been doing the train shows since I was probably – 15 years old i worked at a bait and tackle shop and that's i went to trade shows day in and day out in the off season we did, we did it so many of them and then doing it with ct bow hunting and stuff like that but it's you meet some people and you're like wow that dude is a fucking douchebag <laughs> like you are the biggest douchebag i've ever met in my life and, and and not to smash on anybody or throw any names out there but um chris brackett Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Cough. I, was, I was wondering if you were going to actually throw a name. Yeah. Thank you. So I went I when I was in Pennsylvania at uh I'm hitting home with that one. Yeah, <laughs> with, the, with the Harrisburg show, I was over there and uh he tried cutting my fucking beard. <laughs> what he's like really? he's like somebody somebody get the clippers. We got to fix his beard. And he was just not the nicest person. I, it was kind of upsetting because I, I kind of liked him at the point. A little traumatic. <laughs> yeah, sir? yeah. You don't touch a man's beard. Yeah. <laughs> Bracket, man, that, that whole topic for me is a really touchy subject because I know. he's uh, he's technically a local to us, right? Um, in, in Illinois here, and he the had local the potential dick to be bag? What's that? The, the local, local dick, dick bag. bag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's sad though because he had the potential to be the best role model, man. He, the best. Oh, without uh, a doubt. You know, I looked up from for a long time, like when I was young and wanted to be in the hunting industry. And then once I finally did get in the hunting industry on my own, I realized just how bad he was. But it's just a shame to me. It actually, bums, on a deep level, like it really does bum me out that the, he is the way he is. Um, but I'm glad what happened to him did happen to him because he is a dick. But he could have been the best role model in our hunting industry. Like, his show, Arrow Affliction, when he was like in his prime, mm-hmm. inspired me to shoot my bow every day. Times three, yeah, not everything, all the time. It could be the middle of July. Hunting wasn't even in my brain yet because I had, I was doing summer classes at school, and I'd go watch an Arrow Affliction DVD, and I'd go in my backyard and shoot four hundred arrows in yeah. an afternoon because I was so jacked. And then he just turned out to be a piece of shit. And it just it, it sucks, man. It does yeah, suck. and and that's and I didn't mean to bring him up like that. I meant to bring him up for that reason, for the same reason dude, as it's... you, because I that was my idol. That was my all time yeah. idol. Like I wanted oh, to dude, be we Chris shit all over that guy on our podcast, man. Yeah. I fucking tore him to shreds, <laughs> right? You know, fuck you. You know, if you're gonna do that type of shit and and put do it on video, especially like right. you know you're a role model in this industry. You let all these kids down. All these insp- uh, aspiring archers, even me, you know, yeah. I knew he was a dick. But when that happened, I was like, ah, all right, well, fuck you then, you know. I, you know, one of his producers is one, of, or his ex producers is one of my best friends, That's uh, Chip crazy. City, and so I heard about the shit, not that shit, the poaching stuff, but just as a person, how right. shitty he was. Yeah, and- um, Chip, Chip left before all that shit went down, but shout out to Chip uh, out of New York, shout out. Yeah, yeah. But it just puts me in a weird spot with that too, you know. It's it's just a weird situation, and it is a bummer. It really is. It could have been awesome, but he fucked he, up because he got arrogant. He, yeah, and 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 that's and that's totally the truth, and and that's why I was bringing it up is because he was like my like I like I was saying my idol, you know, like you're saying in the middle of July, you go and you watch the Arrow Affliction and you're shooting stingrays, and you're like, dude, all I want to do is shoot my fucking bow. I want to change the target three hundred different ways just to shoot it. Yeah, because that's what he did. You know what I'm saying? And that. When that came yeah. up, I was like, you know what? Fuck you. You're such a douchebag. Like, I can't believe it, you know? Yep. Same thing. Like, when I was young, I used to watch BMX videos for 45 minutes and go back out and ride my bike for six hours. Right. You know? It was the same thing with, with air affliction, with my bow. Exactly. 
and to find out the guy's a piece of shit, it, it really sucks. That's but now we have now we have Garrett Benner. He's like the next Chris Brackett. <laughs> just straight <laughs> savage. He is, but more real. Exactly. Yeah, he's a up, he's us, but he's but he's fucking nuts. He's, he's out savage. of his mind. He's, he's just a yeah. straight savage. Nah, he's us, but like way better. <laughs> oh, that's what I meant. That's what I meant. That's in all the right ways, man. That guy's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Killing the stingrays and shit like that. Like he's inspired me to like keep my mind going. Like obviously, I. I'm from the fishing industry, so I have a lot of people in the industry, and I got some cool things that have been working in my mind of some of the things that I want to do in, like, the pelagic type of way, like shooting offshore fish and so on and so forth, and watching those videos just get me fucking pumped, and I have the guys to make the, the, the heads and this, that, and the other thing, and I'm, I'm just fucking pumped, and, and watching his videos... Like you're saying with Bracket and everything like that, he just got me like that. I just want to shoot mahi mahi and fucking crazy uh, things because yeah. I just yeah hey. tuna fucking <laughs> yeah. whatever. That's that's the perfect example about how like the hunting industry or podcasts or videos, or whatever. Just like I was saying earlier with Monster Bucks, can can influence uh, just people in general, but especially uh, the younger generation. But if I can watch a video online of people shooting bows, I'm like, damn, I'm gonna go shoot my bow right now. Yeah, that's that's huge. <laughs> Yeah, that is huge. That is huge. It makes you feel guilty that you're fucking sitting down watching something instead of shooting your bow. You know what I mean? I want to go shoot my bow right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, I feel guilty. Like if I don't go hunt and I have an open tag, I feel so guilty that uh, I beat myself up in the hardest of ways. I thought so, I was like, the only one. Uh, no, nah, oh, man. I almost, I, almost nah, said, man. I almost said the forbidden. Whoa. I almost for- said the forbidden. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yo, that was close, man. <laughs> you don't even know. You I thought don't you even got know. that all out. A- everyone that knows me knows what I'm talking about. Oh, jeez. I almost said the forbidden word. Oh, my gosh. I thought you got this that all out. Kurt, 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 I mean, know what it is. is just getting wrapped up in podcast land. It's like we have so much catching up. Bro, I've been no homo. I've been wanting to give you a hug for so long because of certain things going on throughout throughout the year. I mean, success after success. Good news, good news, and then on our end, same reciprocating, and then now this. Uh, just to touch back, I mean, we're we're a, a brotherhood, so to speak, and, and it's just cool to just connect. And and then the shoot spoiled me because I miss all you guys, the whole crew, everyone, everyone affiliated uh, in the Midwest that's in your circle. I, it's just I'm excited if you guys can make it out to uh, August out here in CT. We're going to have a good time, man. We got it on the schedule, man. We're going to try and make it happen. I got some situations going on I'll talk about later, but I got to see if they could map out. But that's the plan. Hell yeah. That's awesome. That's the plan. Hey, if anything, dude, Des Moines shows in March, and uh, your boys are coming here. They're going to get to meet the whole crew. That's exciting. It's going to be badass. And if you do come up here during August, we'll take you on the boat fishing. Oh, yeah, dude. That'll be <laughs> insane. I'll be all about it. I'll be all about it. It's going to be unreal. Dude, I- I'm stoked that you guys have, like, you know, I connected with you guys, and, uh, man, I don't remember the layouts, because my brain's always all over the fucking place. I, I, I think I have ADHD, but I, like, contain it well. Um, Same here. <laughs> you know, with, like, Trevor, you, the CT bow hunting, and the D-Rock connection, and then wanting to start this podcast, and um, it just feels like a couple weeks ago I was talking to you guys about starting a podcast, and now I'm guessing on it. That's wild. Yeah. <laughs> I, it was... It, it, today, months now. all, months all day. Now. I mean, that's all I could think about. Kurt was like, was like the first time that me and you had our conversation on the phone, and you're like telling me what to buy and this, that, and the other thing, and learning how to do so, you know, all that. And then now, I was driving to go hunting, and I called D Rock, and I was just so pumped. I'm like, dude, Kurt Geyers are going to be on our fucking show tonight, and it was not even two months ago. I'm on the phone with him trying to figure out how what computer to fucking buy to start a podcast. I mean, it's just like <laughs> t- t- today is just a, one of those days, you know. It's like I was just so pumped. Yeah, you know, and I'm not going to lie to you. I'll be I'll be completely honest right here. You gonna be um, you gonna be real? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be. We're just being real. <laughs> <laughs> it might be the Shabim. Um. But honestly, I thought about, like, I was like, okay, how that phone call, the reason why I like to talk to people rather than give the info on the, like, through Facebook Messenger or whatever is because I can tell, like, where your mindset is. Or I can try and see where your mindset is. You know what I mean? Where I'm not going to waste an hour of my time to tell you, like, hey, man, 
do this, do this, do this, where I've worked hard to like figure it out. You right. know what I mean? I can tell oh, it how, how about it you actually are. And, um, it's kind of a telling you certain equipment to get and giving, I gave you different options and like, you know, you can record a podcast with your phone. Right. And you can start there or you can dive into equipment. And, um, I felt like you really wanted to do it. And, you know, talking to D rock and, uh, you know, D rock's a homie of mine. And Ooh-ooh. I, I, I personally have a wall built up pretty hard with people. Um, and D rock I'm sure has talked about it. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of like reluctant to give people certain information. Um, but I felt like you really wanted to do this and, um, it worked out the way I thought it was going to work out so far. So, um, it's cool to just see that, like what little advice I did give you, you guys ran with it and kind of made this thing your own. I appreciate that, Kurt, man. That means the world to me, dude. Really? Well, yeah, of course. I mean, you guys have, Episode nineteen now is that what this is? Yeah, episode nineteen. Yep. Hell yeah! Like it, you guys are chipping away already, man. It doesn't even feel like it's been that long. And <laughs> no, it's it's, it's been it's, such a great experience, Kurt. And we thank you for every everything you've done for us along the way and continue to do for us. It's just been every. We look forward to this night every single week. It's what we talk about <laughs> all week long. We text <laughs> back and forth, and it's just, we look forward to this. It's it's incredible. It's so great fuck, I mean, I'm going to be a title sponsor. I got to start helping you guys out a little more. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we. Um, but you got you got a lot of things to take away from by helping us. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> nah, you guys are awesome, man. I uh, if I'm gonna team up with another podcast, it's gonna be a podcast that uh, spits it how it really is, and um, it's just nah, fuck. You know, you listen to yeah, podcast. We're, we're doing it right fun. now. Yeah, I just hope we get our shit together and start killing some big deer here in the state. <laughs> <laughs> It's a cool thing, man. The East Coast is a different ball game, man. That's why you guys uh, have kicked it off the way you have. You know, in the Midwest, you guys would still be doing good because of your format. But you guys have that niche of being from the East Coast where uh, people from the – I feel like you guys are surrounded – I might be wrong here, so call me out if I am wrong because right. this is a Illinois – this is a Western Illinois perspective. I picture you guys are – a. Hunters out east in Connecticut, especially, are a small group of people, and I feel like you have limited ground because I feel like there's just libs out east. Exactly. It's, no, yep. it's the truth. Yep, very true. So that just makes your listing group that much more hardcore. Mm-hmm. Oh, because absolutely. You guys are an escape for them that they didn't have before during their workday. That's right where they live. Absolutely. Yeah. It. Yo. There's so many people that say that too. They're like. East Coast? I had to listen whoa, to this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm I, sorry. I'm sorry. This is East Coast. We love everyone, everyone. But damn, nigga, you just touched my heart. I love you. I love <laughs> yeah, you. Thank you. Fuck <laughs> it. Fuck it. I was trying to hold back. <laughs> it's, I'm He's from freaking. Waterbury, Connecticut. The dirty water. Yeah, I had to say it. It's like, dude, coming from, from someone that I look up to and that knows the game inside and out, thank you. That, yeah. Just oh, yeah. Like, Seriously, that, that, that's badass. It, it, that's, badass. Dude, that's why I want you guys like. I'm trying to. A working class is going to expand. You know, we're a podcast, and uh, always will be a podcast first and foremost. But I'd like to make it more of a family. And if I can include like people like you from a different area in, underneath that, and then trying to contribute like with who knows what the future is going to like have. What we're going to do, we'll talk about this more later. Like where we're going to expand but this is just the start you know if i can just do something like a title sponsor and help you guys out where i can and see where this grows into i mean we can make just a huge family out of it kind of like talking out of my ass here but you get what i'm saying like absolutely dude we get you we're with you the movement one big family the connected like yeah it's a movement more than anything it's just uh yeah a relatable movement we just want to bring the positivity back into bow hunting all and across the country all across the country. I mean there's just there's so much I mean I don't know I can't really speak for your area as much as out here but like the social media of like Facebook and like people asking questions and stuff and just getting torn up like they need a place to like go and like just release I, just release and listen to listen to people who do what they do every day and understand and that you know like we have a bunch of people that have become fans of ours over such a short period of time not fans not fans supporters 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 well, how do you know that it's the shabeen and no 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 all, all the listeners out there yeah it's and, the shabeen talking and so there's and there's and those guys like they'll reach out and they'll ask questions all the time right you know and it's so cool that they're doing that 
Yeah, dude, that's what it's all about. I mean, I try to like picture podcasting from a, an outside perspective. Uh, as far as like, I listen to radio shows and I listen to other podcasts, and you know, I listen to these other podcasts, and I uh, they're kind of like put in your head as a certain way or idolized in a way because they're funny or they like give good information and. That's part of like the fun of podcasting that puts this uh, perspective in the listener's head of however they want to picture you and portray you. And if and if they listen and support you, it doesn't matter how you're portrayed um, because that's how they see you. That's their own individual view, which makes it a beautiful thing. Be, you know, because I listen to like I listen to a lot of comedy podcasts. I really don't listen to honestly your guys' podcast is the it's Say it. fuck in the last Say year it. it's. <laughs> the most hunting podcast I've listened to. Seriously, hell yeah! <laughs> uh, I don't listen to hunting podcasts. I, I don't. I don't do it because okay. I don't want it to influence me um, on, a, on a level that I don't know it's influencing me on. Does right. that make sense? Oh, stay, absolutely. No, yeah. Staying virgin. That wall. I, I know you, Doug. Doug, I yeah. know you. Where's on the other side of that wall? So anything that I say on my podcast is just like shit I've made up in my head <laughs> or like, thought of. Like I don't listen to other hunting podcasts. I guess I don't want it to influence like how I speak or like a tip I'll give. I don't want any outside influence from another hunting podcast. You want it true. I feel like that's ingenuine. Yeah, and you want it true. You want it true to your heart, not right. to what somebody else made up or you want it yeah. real. Experience. Yeah, for sure. And like when I listen to a podcast, I listen to laugh. <laughs> 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 what, like what's what's more funny than two hillbillies and a Mexican? <laughs> <laughs> Like when I listen to your podcast, I'm listening right. to live. I no, listen no, no, to your guys' podcast almost to like <laughs> it's almost like a homey thing. Like see how you're doing, uh, but right. I enjoy it while but I enjoy it while I'm doing it. That's awesome, right. dude. Where right. I appreciate that. Yeah, appreciate that to the fullest for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, like I didn't. I know you guys didn't take it that way, but like for listeners, I don't mean to sound like a dick when I say that, but like <laughs> it's just I don't listen to hunting podcasts. I just don't, man. Usually, it sounds shitty and it's probably hard to understand, but. It's, no, uh, no, I get it. I'm the same way. I don't listen to other hunting podcasts, and I, I listen to you, working class because I learn how to hunt from you guys. But other than that, oh, that like, <laughs> but like <laughs> other other podcasts, I just I I don't listen to them, and I and and I can and D Rock can can vouch for that. But I'm not a big podcast guy, and listening to other podcasts just for yeah. that that same thing. You know what I'm saying? I just I'm well, gonna, it's the same. You know, if you go up to Michael Waddle and you're like, "Hey, what hunting shows you watch?" He's probably gonna be like. None. <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. You know, right. you know those guys. Guys with hunting shows don't watch hunting shows. Right. Like that. Uh, Chip City, our buddy. What hunting shows do you watch? He's like, I don't. They don't watch them, and that's not because they don't enjoy them. It's because he doesn't want it to influence what he does. Right. And not, and not only just that, though, Kurt. I mean, for the new guys, so they're not intimidated by if they just tuned in this episode it's like what the fuck is this show like you <laughs> know what I mean? what? <laughs> and, and, and it's just to get a clearer picture picture and perspective is that the more you hunt the less you start looking for information because you're you're learning and mm -hmm. you already know so you you're getting your own information exactly right. you're getting your own flow your own groove so you, you want to be careful of how it's influenced because Again, this is only my second year hunting whitetail, and I, I started off as a blank page at a later uh, eight, stage of my life. I don't want to give off my age because I'm an old man compared to you. <laughs> but uh, straight up being, though, is being the blank page is like you go get any information that you can from any resource, and you gel it into your practice in the woods every time you go out. So just to be molded with that working class, for yo ass. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just to be molded that way is like bringing that Midwest vibe here in CT in the heart of it. Cause the dirty water, dog. That shit is the most cent one of the most centered cities in Connecticut. So I'm I'm trying to reach out to everyone, and Trev's helped me out because he's a you know CT bow hunting, and we got Ryan, which is one of the most experienced hunters that I've come across here in, in Connecticut. You know, not, that's why we bust on him. You know, he's, a, he's yeah. skilled, but he's a porn star. So how skilled can he be? You know what I mean? Skilled, skilled in many that's different awesome. ways. <laughs> but point being, man, is just the influence in the brotherhood. Not to get, you know, rambling man myself. It's just everything is just surreal. How it happens so quick. It's like, I'll always say it. It's 
a rabbit hole, if you will, quote unquote, not by me. And <laughs> I learned that from from the giddy up, man. And and that's where I want to transition, man, is how we met up. Can can you give us your perspective of how we met up? Not to glorify it, but for me, it's very special, and it brought us to this point now. The the everything's meant for a reason. Yeah, dude. Well, it also like tied in through kind of between me, Steve, and Eric. So, you know, sometimes Steve would see some shit before I would see it from you, and then it would like so it tapered in differently for each of us. And uh, man, I remember your username like always stood out to me. And I I won't put you on blast now. You can if you want, but I won't do it. No, um, that's on the deal, I guess. Now. <laughs> okay. Well, then no, let me for just say baby this. mama drama purposes. Uh-oh. Baby okay, mama let me drama. say this then. Uh-oh. I'll I'll play it vague, but I'll play it I'll play it true though. Um, I remember seeing your username come across, and I was like, dude, that dude is fucking rowdy. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember, that's East Coast. Like, <laughs> dirty water. It was like almost your username. You were putting it out there in a way that like I would stir some shit up. A little bit. Like, you were so edgy. You were so edgy with your username that people were like, God damn, really? And so I, I was always like, yeah, that guy's rad. But I couldn't, like, ever call you out because of your username. And um, so I was like, you were kind of hidden behind your username because of your situation or whatever. So uh, am I right on here or am I kind of sound like I'm full of shit? No, you're, no, one, you're 100 right now. Keep going. Yeah, let's okay. keep hearing this. <laughs> I'm <interested. laughs> <clears throat> so I keep seeing like your name pop up, like just super supportive um, of everything we're doing. And we chatted through like, I think Instagram or wherever. And uh, next thing I know, you're like, Hey man, let me send you guys some jackets. And uh, we got some snap on heated jackets for me, which was like insane. I couldn't believe it. And I got this, got all this in the mail. You actually sent it to Steve's place, which is fucking bizarre. Now. <laughs> <thinking back. laughs> and, so Steve brings these over and we open them up. I'm like, holy shit. Like, this is like legit snap on heated jackets. Like a listener sent us this shit. Like, what the fuck? This is insane. <laughs> like, let's FaceTime him right now and tell him thank you. And then I remember we FaceTime you and then it just like put it totally put everything in perspective, how you were, like just how genuine you were, how supportive you were. And then really, dude, it's just that it's all history from there. We just uh I don't know, really, fast forward, you're at my fucking, I picked you up from the airport and you're at our shoot. Or we're hanging out in Des Moines, <laughs> no, we're hanging out in Des Moines at the Iowa Classic. That's Fuck. what's up. Kicking and uh, yeah, I'll be honest right now, I'll completely call it. So we knew you were coming to the Classic, right? And uh, Doug and Eric got there first. And me and Steve, I think, and the rest of the crew showed up uh, a little later. Maybe the, it might have been the next that fucking day. No, that afternoon. It was that later, afternoon. Okay. Yep, later in the afternoon. And, I'll, and I'll so, never forget that. Yeah, yeah, okay. So you guys will kind of get this vibe, too. It's like when you get a listener wants to meet you at a show, whatever, especially because you were coming from out of town, like, well, we have no idea what he's actually like. You know? We didn't we had no idea. So, Where? Where? Um, you met up with D-Rock and Doug, and or I'm sorry, Eric and Doug. It's close enough. And uh, <laughs> E-Rock, yeah. E-Rock. Yeah, E-Rock. Cool. And they're like, dude, D-Rock is cool as fuck. I'm like, really? I was like, good, because I was hoping that we wouldn't have to hang out with some dude that sucked the whole time. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was hoping dude. you were as cool as we thought you were, you know? And uh, they're like, no, dude, he's awesome. I'm like, oh, perfect. Like, I can't wait to meet him, though. And we get in there, and I think we met at dinner, right? Yeah. In the morning yeah. at that uh, three-level bar. We met at the bottom and had dinner. And Yeah, that's when dude, I was getting cracked was like, on for my drink. What's that? Yeah, your wine. <laughs> yeah. But what? Coats the stomach. What does it do? What does it do? Coats the stomach, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we eat dinner down there, and I'm like, I just felt like I knew you forever from talking to you there. Like, it did not, like, there was no gap or awkwardness. And that was it, man. Really, that was history. That's so awesome. Over a snap on jacket. <laughs> Not, not even I love it. Though. I think it's not so cool. Just, it, honestly, no, no, no. I know. I'm not saying it like that. I'm just saying that it's just so cool that you did that for those guys. It's well, just so cool. It's not even just that though. It's like they inspired me so much because I wanted to get into whitetail hunting so bad that I was reaching anywhere I could get it, whether it be magazines, books, uh, internet, uh, social media, everything, soaking it in. And then I found podcasts. And I, <laughs> not to put you on blast, Kurt. 
I listen to Working Class Bow Hunter, me being who I am, I'm like, everyone that knows me knows I'm not, I'm a hood motherfucker, right? But I'm, I'm not that normal hood motherfucker. I'm the hood motherfucker that talks the way he does, but I got m- myself to that by learning everything I could. And it brings me to just finding your number You're one You're smarter podcast. than your normal hood motherfucker, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> See, you've educated yourself in all the correct ways, my friend. Yeah. You're downplaying yourself by calling yourself a hood motherfucker. Because I think people are going to lump you into a group that you're not involved in. Well, I'm that, I'm that motherfucker. But I get it, though. I'm that motherfucking pie ball. I'm that pie ball. You're a pie ball. <laughs> the pie ball, dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're the dough with all sorts of spots, man. <laughs> That's awesome. That's what I'm saying. And I just soaked everything in. And when I listened to your first podcast, no lie, it was like episode, I want to say it was like episode 53. I was like, holy shit. It's like, this dude is just like me, but better. Like, I'm going to learn some something about hunting in the Midwest, or whether it be just something in general with whitetail. And every time I soaked it in, and, and it led me to, I, the way I am, sorry to be so fucking spotty, but the way I am is I went to episode number one, and episode number one is like, if I start something, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with that in the later episodes, so I go to start number one, and it's the song you had was so surreal because uh, what song was it do you remember because i could play it if you uh, like charlie daniels fuck um long hair country boy yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was just you and steve and you guys play that song and you talked white tail and i was like i'm hooked because this this is what i want to relate to the the everyday working class well, so when i met you D Rock, you were like, "Yo, you got to check out Working Class." So I work, I check you out, and I do the same exact thing. I went where, to episode where one. Where were we though? We were at the Hartford show. We were at a show in Connecticut. In Connecticut, and I, I brought some Midwest news. That's it. All right, <laughs> <laughs> you brought the Midwest to the East Coast. That's it. That's awesome, dude. That is awesome. But man, is is that's that the point of the story? Is that was the I eye opener for me is just reaching out and then before you know it we meet up at Iowa and the the deer classic was crazy well Kurt so you, you've got a lot of awesome tactics and we've already learned a few things and you can ask these guys I'm writing stuff down as you're talking just taking all this information in um, what's a number one tactic now of course I, I don't believe you've ever hunted the east coast um, but from what you've learned through our podcast, what is something that a technique that you use in the Midwest that you think that you would also apply here? What is one technique that you always use anywhere you go? Uh, I think the one main thing that probably apply would be like thermals with hills and everything. Um, that's kind of rare for a lot of our areas. Um, is that fair? Thermals, you think? Absolutely, yeah. That's something that we've been touching on throughout the uh, since we've started the podcast here. Absolutely. Can you touch on that a little bit more? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say that it applies to a big majority of guys hunting like Iowa, Illinois area, Wisconsin, maybe in the driftless area where it's uh, man, fuck, I, I probably mixed that up. Where, where the glaciers haven't plowed everything over is what I'm saying, um, or it's real hilly. A lot of the thermal game probably applies to them. For my area, it doesn't really so much. Um, that's something to think about. Thermals, how they act in the in the morning and the afternoon, and uh, the ways they're moving. But oh, there's a little bit of that game going on here. But it's um, it's just different ball games, really. It's some of it can apply, but it's just cool to hear you guys talk about that shit. The more mountainous areas versus uh, our area, which is relatively flat. It's you know, like a a big hill is fifty foot. You know? Oh yeah, we're 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 hiking a mile up that hill to hunt at the top of it. On yeah, we'll, some of these ridges and stuff like that. We'll we'll go from you know two hundred and fifty feet on on the topo maps to at the top. We're at five hundred. You know, six hundred, I mean, seven hundred. Yeah. We're, we're we're climbing up there to the, the it, tops of these. So we do apply these thermals now, and it's been something we've been trying to wrap our heads around all season with these newer properties. Um, and it, it, that's that's a great answer to, to what I was getting at there um, and trying to apply those different situations for the areas that you're at. 
Yeah, it just doesn't apply to us like the same way, you know. It's uh, there is hills and ravines, and you have to be conscious of that a little bit. But it's not like it's uh, you know, it's not like it takes you forty five minutes to climb a hill here, right? You know, like versus like when I hunted in Colorado, it took us two and a half hours to get up a mountain, and it's like you have to be super conscious of like the wind is always changing. You're always moving with the wind. Like shit's always different. We're in Illinois. For the most part, if it's a northwest wind, it's going to be northwest unless you're on like a hard ridge and it's hitting the ridge and going up and swirling and doing all sorts of crazy shit. It's uh, it's relatively flat here, so it's more working around those ravines and creeks and ditches and entry and exit is more the main uh, focus on being successful here. Um you know, thermals don't play as much of a part as they do out in your area. That's crazy. And and just you're just hunting those the big fields and, and stuff like that and they have like some type of like different swells and you're not that's awesome. It's just totally yeah, different you know, than what we're used to, you know what I'm saying? We're we're yeah, hunting yeah. like laurels and, and all kinds of crazy like oak flats cliffs and, and cliffs yeah. and mountains. So it's definitely yeah. just just different to, especially when you're when you're listening to like your podcast. And you guys are just talking about the what do they call them the RP CRP CRP, CRP, CRP fields, fields and yeah. I'm like oh yeah. CRP field what what the hell's a fee- CRP but, field I had to look it up yeah. I didn't even know what it was we don't have well, that <laughs> yeah like the, the thing is where so the property I grew up hunting is uh, a property that the way the terrain the terrain features run is north south so there was technically three ravines on this property and they all ran straight north south. And it was all timber, and I didn't where I, I didn't have any um, crop field edges to hunt on this property. So I'm hunting big hardwoods in Illinois, and uh, that was a tough property to hunt because it wasn't like the the a ravine cut a certain way from north south and it ended up going you know east west or west east or a certain way to where the deer were cutting from here from a field and we're going to cut across this ravine a certain way and they had to be pushed down into this terrain feature down into this creek. It was very generic in the way it ran. So it made the the deer travel patterns were very sporadic. And there wasn't hard terrain features that really forced them one way or another. So it was a lot of guess and check. Um, don't be afraid to pull a stand, move a stand, hang and bang, get there, hunt it, kill a deer, first sit. There's it a lot of, really a lot of guess and check and learning as you went to where one of the properties I hunt now what I just talked about where I use that creek and the hard ridges and the ravines to pattern deer through natural terrain features to kill a buck. Um, if I lived on the East coast, I would really, really be on those topo maps and be studying how those deer had to move through that terrain. Cause they're not going to walk up a rocky ass cliff where they could just walk their fuck around it and go through a ravine. You know, you know what I mean? You'd be surprised, though. These exactly. deer out here, they're crazy. They're like mountain goats, man. They go well, up and down they these They will things. do that, but what will the majority of them do? Right, right. No, exactly. yeah, they're crazy out do, here, though. Do just that. Like, if you ever seen a dirt bike go up a sand hill, you think a doe or, or a buck's going to do it any slower? It's like straight right. up. Like, that's that's what you're facing. Well, oh, it's three hops. It's boing, boing, boing. And yeah. yeah. I, you know, <laughs> exactly. I've deer do that on washouts and shit. I never think I'd ever see him go up. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I used to hunt in uh, Fulton County, Illinois. I used to hunt a old coal mine stripping area. And the whole thing was just steep ravines and short spoils and, and washouts and bluffs and all that. And... That was the toughest hunt property you could probably hunt in Illinois. And uh, I never killed my biggest deer there because of that reason, because I was too young to figure it out at the time. That's just, <laughs> It's crazy hunting those big, huge mountains. Like this year, we, we're hunting one of the biggest mountains I've ever hunted yeah. personally. And, and, and the landowner was like, yeah, the deer, they go up this part of the mountain. And I'm like, that side of the mountain? I said, that thing's straight cliff. It's like <laughs> slate rock. He's like, you should see them. They look like mountain goats going up it. Shubby. It's just so crazy. Yeah. That shit doesn't affect them, man. It's so crazy. It's not fair. So, no. uh, talking about that, it brings us uh, actually to the last segment of the show. And it's crazy, all this talk. We've been going out forever, rambling. <laughs> Kurt Geyer. King Kurt, Midwest, WCB. 
what rattles your antlers? <laughs> oh, fuck. What am I supposed to do here? <laughs> <laughs> what What is one thing that you hate when you go out to your hunt? What rattles your antlers? When what, I'm hunting? What pisses you off? Yeah, what pisses you off? Hunting industry, when you're hunting. What stands out the most? What rattles your antlers? Mm, when I'm hunting coyotes. Those make me mad. Okay, yeah. Um, but I understand why they're necessary. Hunting industry, what rattles my antlers? Fuck, boys. Um, <laughs> I think the dishonesty in the industry and dirty business bothers me a lot because I've uh, I'm starting to experience more and more of it. Um, shadiness and people lying and fronting about what they are. Uh. Um, if you're not a hunter and you're pretending. <laughs> There's a lot of people out there with podcasts and shows that are pretending that they're big time hunters and they have this experience and they're giving false knowledge to people that don't know any better. And that really bothers no. me. Um, That's what rattles your antlers? Was, that rattles my antlers. <laughs> <laughs> that's, no, that's deep Instagram though. No, I get it. Instagram rattle my antlers too. <laughs> that rattles my antlers. <laughs> I understand why they're necessary for marketing purposes. But god damn it, I'm tired of seeing nothing but Instagram chicks just post pictures of fucking Canadian geese. That's and it. Claim, <laughs> and claim they're hardcore whitetail bow hunters. That's awesome. Uh, At least someone look like, cute. It's like, all right. Yeah. You know, that's like, the purpose. Bitch, listen here, if you're a real hunter, you're going to have a whitetail down. I'm t- I don't want to see pictures of Canadian geese. I go whack one of the machete at the park. Like, I don't care. <laughs> Yo, that is... That's Yo, the that's truth. that that right there, my friend, is East Coast hardcore. What you that's just said, because that's something we say. Because no lie, Kurt, Canadian geese, and especially in Connecticut, were allowed fifteen a day early season. Fifteen a fucking day, dude. They're flying raccoons, man. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but they're delicious. I'm not, I'm not saying they're not fun to shoot and they're not fun to eat. But if you're gonna claim you're a pro staff hunter, and, and this is guys, geese. dude. There's guys I do this too. <laughs> And all you kill is turkeys with fucking 12 gauges and geese with a 12 gauge. Don't fucking talk to me about bow hunting. That's right. <laughs> Word up. And they act Word like they're bow, they're bow hunters. That's ridiculous. Well, they do the same if, shit if out here. real hustle, and I, I do the best as we can with our podcast to try to recognize um, anyone, really, that puts the effort in with a bow. You know, I try to put those people out and... and and I hate to be like, oh yeah, women hunters. That sucks. I have to. Say, it would suck to be a chick and have to hear like, huntress kills 180 inch deer on all these blog posts. That would yeah, suck. Why that all the time. That's what I'm saying. It's like there's so many good female role models out there, and we know dude, a Kristen lot of them. McDaniel has killed bigger bucks than any dude this year, and that's a, <laughs> you know that that's another thing that rattles my antlers. Like she's just a hunter, just like us. She just put in the work. That's right. Hell yeah, and that's what it's about too. A little harsh, I know, but fuck, man. No, no, no it's not harsh. It's true. It's for the love of the game. You just, <laughs> hey, Doug, you're just being real. You're being, being real. We get that a, a ton out here. Man. We're just being real. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> oh, man. So th- this has been such an honor, man. Just to be, uh, so to speak, in your presence in the podcast land. Oh, I, fuck. No, no, but <laughs> seriously, though, it's like this conversation alone is it didn't even have to go there, but it did. We learned a lot at the same token, and we're we're just doing it. You help us out along the way, and we're we're spreading the good word of the brotherhood, the the hunting industry, bow hunting industry especially, and pushing out the good word of working class bow hunter. And that's what it's about, you know. This East Coast bow hunting podcast, East meets West with working class bow hunter. And for all our listeners out there, Kurt, I mean, we we touch on so much. We could go on forever. I think we're pushing over two hours already. (laughs) You know what I mean? We got to make a part two or something. Yeah, right. (laughs) I'll come back anytime you'll have me, man. What what did you say? Once a week? You just want to be here once a week? (laughs) Let's do it, man. We do it on Mondays. I do my podcast on Thursdays. Let's hit it up. That's awesome. So Really, though, man, I appreciate uh, just you guys have me on just being able to like talk freely in conversation and not feel so, uh, Q and a Q and a Q and a just fucking blah monotonous, just bullshit. The whole time it's been really refreshing. And that's why I, I do like to guess another podcast. I, I enjoy it. 
um, almost just as much as recording my own because it gives me a different perspective and it gives me uh, knowledge on how to be interviewed. And right. uh, you guys, this is like the this is the best podcast I've ever guested on by far because um, you maybe feel just super just a part of everything. Standing, and, you uh, gotta make me cry, y'all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it touches cry. home, man. That's awesome. Shit. Can't thank you. Thank enough. you. Thank you, Kurt. Yeah, man, we I mean, really appreciate that, yes, that man. You, I've, I've enjoyed a lot of the podcast, but this is just, uh, it felt natural. But, you know, that might be because me, you know, me and D Rock are homies already. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey. You guys' interview skills are on point, though. Like, you guys are going to go a long way with this podcast. I can tell you guys are committed. Just, uh, there's going to be a lot of low points. You guys are going to want to choke each other out. Um, but just stick with it, man. It'll always get better. And it's just an amazing. Yeah. The community you'll build, if anything, and the friends you'll make just having guests on the show. Even oh, if yeah. no one listens, as long as you have guests on the show and you guys have fun, that's all that matters. That's the point I'm at. Fuck it. If everyone quits listening, we'll just keep recording. Fuck That's them. right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll just record with each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just back and forth. We're a force to be reckoned with. You have to listen sooner or later. <laughs> yeah, that's it. The movement. <laughs> the movement. So something positive. Ryan. Something positive. Um, I feel like I go with this all the time, but couple weeks left in the season get in the stand grind it out trev what you got let's let's end on a good note something positive um i got i got a lot of positive but i i can't the positive i have is is being part of the team here the whole the whole brotherhood across wrapping it in with uh with kurt and everything like that that just i'm that's just positive as it comes you know Hell yeah. Um, what do you got? Amen to that. Uh, what I bring something positive to the table is we have Kurt Geyer, King Kurt, Hanging Stands Kurt, <laughs> a.k.a. Daddy, on the oh, podcast. <laughs> on, on the podcast. Working class from the working class bow hunter. You can check him out anywhere any podcast is broadcasted, as well as Carbon TV. Everywhere. And if you want to keep on learning and keep on tuning in to East Coast Bowhunter Podcast, sponsored by, presented by Working Class Bowhunter, you can tune in to Kurt Geyer at his show. Stay stepping. Stay slaying. Go shoot your bow. Kurt from Working Class Bowhunter here. D-Rock cut me off. I didn't get to say something positive. And what I have to say really isn't a positive saying, but it's just more of a piece of advice. And just be positive about something and be passionate about something. And if you're not passionate about something in your life, there's nothing to be positive about. So just remember that. Go shoot your bow and good luck to you. We love you. <laughs> <laughs>